Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Harrisburg City Council Public Meeting. My name is Wanda Williams, and I'm the chair and all the city council are members. Today is Tuesday, August the 20th, 2019. And the purpose of this meeting is to have a healthy discussion about road traffic safety within the city of Harrisburg. There was a lot of recent discussion at our last meeting and via email and Facebook on the removal of stop signs, specifically in the locations of Emerald Street, Calker Street, Harris Street, and Boyd Alley. The stop signs were deemed to be unnecessary, and we will give Mr. Wayne Martin, who is sitting with us here, he's our engineer, an opportunity to elaborate further. We would ask everyone to be respectful to him as he speaks, and everyone in the room will have the opportunity to express their concerns or opinions at the microphone. When it's time, I ask you all to sign in if you'd like to speak, and if you didn't, that's fine. And clearly state your name and address before speaking. Mr. Martin, the floor is yours. Just a minute. Mr. Um, Madsen would like yeah, to make just a statement. I have a statement. Uh, good evening. President Williams, fellow council members, the administration. After last week's council meeting, I decided to go door to door to talk with residents in the areas directly affected by the removal of the stop signs on 3rd Street. I took flyers to let them know about this meeting and a petition for those who wanted to keep the stop signs. I also started a petition online and posted it on social media so that I could gather as much information as possible. I can tell you that there was overwhelming support from the community to keep the signs at Kelker Street and Emerald Street. Neighbors' biggest concerns with removing the stop sign at Kelker Street is that there is a playground and a community center, including a daycare, at that intersection. There are a lot of families with children coming and going, and removing the stop signs from this area would decrease driver awareness at that intersection. If the signs are to be removed at Kelker Street and Harris Street, as proposed, there's nothing to slow down traffic between Riley Street and McClay Street, with the exception of the raised crosswalk at Boyd Street. Most neighbors have told me that traffic calming bump outs do not slow down speeders as expected in this area. And they are connected that without stop signs, drivers will feel free to speed between Riley and McClay, especially at Kelker. As for Emerald Street, the community's biggest con concerns were for children walking up to the playground at 4th and Emerald. And for those patronizing the Emerald Chinese restaurant and the Family Dollar. Roughly 225 feet from the intersection is the entrance to the Family Dollar. And the stop sign at Emerald makes it easier for those going northbound to enter and exit the parking lot. I look forward to hearing from everyone tonight. These stop signs bring a sense of comfort and security to the area. A traffic study may say that we do not need the stop signs, but 179 signatures on this petition and the voices I heard this week in our community say that we do. Okay, before we do any <clears throat> Any other uh, statements by council members? Um, please do, Ms. Chardin, Houston, please do the roll call. Mr. Allett? Uh, present. Ms. Bowers? Present. Ms. Daniels? Here. Ms. Green? Present. Mr. Madsen? Here. Mr. Majors? Here. President Williams? Present. Thank you. And we move on to uh, committee business, but before we do that, there would be a statement by our vice president, Mr. Allett. Yes, thank you. So I find myself in an interesting position tonight because as a council member and also a resident of 3rd Street, this rings uh, very close to home. Um, I personally strongly oppose the removal of any of the stop signs. Um, and let me talk about why, because I understand. You can't hear oh, you. can't hear you. I am so sorry. Um, that's usually not something that happens to me. <laughs> um, as a, both a member of city council but also a resident of 3rd Street, um, this is uh, something that obviously is very close to home for me. <laughs> I strongly oppose the removal of the stop signs. Um, and let me talk a little bit about why. Um, why I understand that we went and approved in 2015 the whole multimodal project for 3rd Street. Um, at that time, we really weren't even discussing the advent of the construction of the courthouse on 6th Street or the 2nd Street conversion project. Um, my concern has still remained about the speed of which people drive on 3rd Street. Um, I witness on a regular basis, and people have heard me talk at city council before, about me being the, the feeling a grandpa chasing down drivers speeding down 3rd Street. Um, I live right by the park. Um, in fact, last night when I was walking the dog, it struck me, actually it was yesterday at lunchtime I was walking the dog, it struck me at the neighborhood center they were taking the kids down to Riverfront. Um, and I watched them pile out, I watched them cross 3rd Street, 2nd Street, and then Front Street. And what was interesting about at each step of the way I kept thinking, 
gosh, I'm glad there's the stop sign here at Third Street. We got down to Front Street. I actually was nervous because in the time that I've lived on Front Street, I just still see people fly down Front Street. Um, I realized that we can't adequately patrol and police people who are speeding through the neighborhoods. Um, but the stop sign is the biggest deterrent that we have. And that's something that I think, you know, in advent of all the planning that we're doing within the traffic patterns throughout the city, um, looking at it independently or putting it all together in the conjunction of everything that we're planning, I think it's really quite premature to actually go ahead with any removal of stop signs until we adequately know exactly what traffic patterns are going to be in place in not just the near future, but in, in the you know foreseeable future. Um, I, I do have that concern, and I say that not for any political reasons. I say that as someone who lives smack in the middle of where this is going to happen. Um, and, and I'm realizing more and more as we do this how much I want to put myself in everyone else's you know, eyes as we do these pr traffic patterns and these projects throughout the city um, to really be sensitive to that. Um, I think it's interesting to see everyone here tonight who has a concern um, about this that I think it's something we really need to listen to as a city and not be so rash. I get it. In 2015, we approved a multimodal plan that was extensive. Um, but now that we are in the midst of it and hopefully finishing it soon, when I'd love to park back on my street anytime real soon, um, we really need to be sensitive to this. We need to be cognizant of the impact and we need to be aware of, of the things that we can't necessarily foresee and or control. Um, and, and really, that's kind of you know, where I stand on it. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this public hearing. I kind of wish we didn't have to have you know, a public hearing. I think the, um, the outpouring of the community and the thoughts that have been expressed, whether it be through social media, whether it be through council last week, whether it be through the countless emails, phone calls, Facebook messages, et cetera, that I've received, um, I think we really need to listen to the hearts of our community right now on this and be cognizant of it. Um, and I know you're going to do a presentation. I know those things are happening. Um, all that being said, you know, I th it doesn't change the reality of um, what I think will continue to happen. And honestly, we've been in a, st in a state of construction on Third Street for over a year. I don't think we have any idea of what the true traffic patterns are going to be once Third Street is fully done and, and kind of open again. Um, and I think that's something we just really need to be sensitive to. But okay. thanks for hearing me out, and I'm, I'll turn it back over to you, Chad. Okay, thank you, Mr. Abbott. Anyone else, council members? Okay, so yours, Mr. Martin. Great, um, thank you, Madam President, members of council. Um, I thought it'd be helpful if we just um, started with a timeline of the uh, Third Street project, just so um, everybody rem you know remembers where we started. And, and um, Resolution 70 of 2014 was that uh, application for the multimodal funding from PennDOT. It was tied to the uh, receivership, uh, $10 million, and how, how the city intended to spend it. Uh, also in 2014 was the Commonwealth. I think it was the first project, if I'm not mistaken, that was funded with multimodal funds, and that was the bump outs on Third Street, Third and North Street, um, uh, Sixth and Commonwealth, uh, the raised intersection <coughs> at Commonwealth and North. So, the Third Street project, the city's Third Street project, was modeled after uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's multimodal uh, project. December first, uh, 2014, this uh, city received their uh, award from PennDOT for the Third Street grant. Uh, resolution 13 of 2016 was the application to impact Harrisburg, who's a funding partner along along with the PennDOT funds. Uh, resolution 2015, uh, I'm sorry, resolution 15, 2016. Um, and I just remembered I forgot to introduce somebody. Was the uh, authorization to engage Walsh Montgomery for the design of the Third Street Multimodal Project. Um, joining me today is uh, Andy Durr, who is the project manager for Walsh Montgomery. He, he headed up the design of that project, of this project. November 11, 2016 was the first public meeting on the project. Uh, it was actually very well attended. Uh, that one was at the Broad Street Market. Uh, February 16, 2017, we received environmental approval. Uh, that, that's a documentation that's needed uh, for any transportation project in order to get the funding, uh, transportation funding um, locked in to a grant agreement. Uh, April 12th, 2017, so even though we had environmental clearance, we still continue to have public meetings. Uh, April 18, 
2017, we received the, uh, I'm sorry, the Impact Harrisburg grant, which was the matching funds for the PennDOT multimodal was executed. June 23rd, 2017 was the PennDOT grant was executed. Uh, the project was bid out and awarded on August 11th, 2017. Construction began on November 9, 2017. So you say you were, um, it's been under construction for a year. It's been under construction for a year plus, and prior to that, it was actually uh, UGI was in there uh, doing the, the mainline replacements. So it's been at least two years that Third Street has been under construction. So the uh, the Federal Highway Administration, um, it's, it's actually an administration under the U.S. Department of Transportation, has designed guidance on when stop signs are are appropriate, when the use of stop signs are appropriate. The, the first bullet is that stop signs should not be used for speed control. So if everyone believes that the stop signs should remain in because they calm traffic, there's over 70 traffic studies that indicate otherwise. Use, um, so here's where they are used. Use where the volume of traffic on the intersection road is, is approximately equal. Uh, that is not the case at any of the aforementioned um, intersections. When the combined vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian volumes um, over 2,000 day and are in insufficient sight distance, crash records. So interestingly enough, the, going back in time, the only uh, partial warrant that was met, these are called warrants, was a sight distance. And so when we were doing this project, and keep in mind the sight, the sight distance back in the 90s was based on a 35 mile an hour um, speed limit. The current speed is 25 miles an hour, so the sight distance calculations was not uh, uh, accurate in there for today's usage. Um, the one thing we did was we installed uh, the bump outs to improve all sight distance. So there are no sight distance issues at any of the intersections. Um, the decision uh, to stop the um, uh, stop traffic at, to install a stop sign has to be based on an engineer study. And there are other um, considerations listed in the uh, manual, um, FHWA, Manual for Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Uh, when you have a traffic signal warrants are met, it's an interim measure. Uh, that's not the case at any of the intersections. Five or more reported crashes in a 12-month period that a stop sign could correct. Um, that had, is, you know, that, that wasn't the case when, when these were installed and, uh, and the minimum volumes. PennDOT um, has promulgated regulations under the Pennsylvania Vehicle Code uh, as they have authority to do so. Uh, they're found in PA code. Uh, what they have done is they said those five or more reported crashes in that 12 month period can be both reported and non-reported crashes. So you can use both. Um, and then the multi, uh, they have another note there in the, in the PA code and I just copied it verbatim. Multi-way stop applications may not be used because of limited available corner sight distance unless there's no practical method of improving the sight distance or reducing the speed limit to satisfy the minimum corner sight distance values. So when you go back to the original studies uh, that were done, the rationale was that there was illegally parked vehicles close to the intersection. Um, you know, illegally parked vehicles, uh, the practical uh, mechanism for improving the sight distance is actually ticket um, illegally parked vehicles. Okay. Traffic calming devices. So uh, City Ordinance 8-2005 uh, uh, adopted uh, Pennsylvania Traffic Calming Handbook, PennDOT Publication 383. I will also mention that when the city signed its grant agreement, it agreed to comply with all PennDOT um, manuals and failure to do so would result in not only losing the funding, but re re uh, losing uh, all state transportation funding until um, such time as it, it complies with the ordinances. So, excuse me, I'm just gonna blow this up because I'm here. So, uh, this is a uh, cut right out of the right out of the handbook. Can I see that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm getting too old. I can't read these small prints. Um, well, if you can, we do we can. <laughs> okay. Well, and well, I'm sure me, most people over there can. Well, well, let me let me read it. Let can me read larger. It, let me read it to everyone. Let, let me read it to everyone. This is a excuse me. This is a a cutout from the um, from the manual, and it says a common request made by citizens is to use a multi-way stop control as a means of slowing traffic. 
However, multi-way stop sign control should only be installed in accordance with the warrants listed in the manual on uniform traffic control devices. If installed well where not warranted, traffic rarely comes to a complete stop. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> traffic rarely comes to a complete stop. Uh, this during observations of the intersection, this is this is true. Um, traffic does not come to a complete stop at these intersections. Motorists increase their speeds between stop signs to make up for lost time. Residents may gain a false sense of security. The use of unwarranted stop signs can create disrespect for stop sign control at other intersections where it was truly needed. As the volume disparity increases between opposing traffic flows at an intersection, the stop control is increasingly disobeyed by the motorist on the higher volume street. Unwarranted multi way stop controls are particularly dangerous where vehicle speeds through the stop sign are greater than 10 miles an hour. This situation is very common when streets are wide, sight distances are good, and the opposing traffic ratio is greater than 60 to 40. Typically, regardless of the volumes, most motorists tend to obey stop signs if the traffic split is no greater than 60 to 40. So this is the guidance that PennDOT has provided in its traffic calming manual that was adopted by City Council. When? Yes. When? 2005. 2005. 2005. Okay. Uh, that's 2005, so it hasn't been any amendments since then, or revisions? No. Uh, th there were several revisions. And when I say adopt, it's in there as a reference saying that traffic mm -hmm. calming devices take the definition as uh, per the Pennsylvania Traffic Calming. Manual publication 383. There has not, if you're asking, has the 380 publication 383 been updated? Uh, no, there are. There is an update um, scheduled. I, I know that there's uh, uh, consulting firms working on an update to that manual. Hired by Harrisburg? No, no. This is a PennDOT uh, publication. Okay. okay yeah. Well, I'm just. No, but I think the. Uh, I think it is Kittleson who is under contract with Har uh, Harrisburg for another project. So uh, th this is, you know, the, these are the references that we utilized in conducting the design. Um, and so if not multi-way stop signs, what traffic calming devices are appropriate? Um, curb extensions, bump outs. Uh, they are approved traffic calming measure referenced in the PennDOT traffic calming manual. Curb extensions, bump outs, reduce speed. This is all per the manual. Reduce speed, reduce conflicts, improve pedestrian safety, improve sight distance, and prevent illegal parking. Um, I can go into further explanation of, of all these and how they do it, but uh, the long and short of it is the pedestrian is out there uh, where they can be seen. Uh, typically, they're um, you know they're, they're, they're protected by a curb. Um, the sight distance is improved because the, you uh, prevented that illegal parking, and uh, obviously the sight distance of the pedestrian is improved because now they're out there. Um, what in what would have been the intersection okay. um, other safety improvements that uh, are part of the project high visibility crosswalks and those have a crash that's crash modification, crash factor. modification factor that that I'm sorry that's a type of that'd be a crash modification factor uh, crash reduction of 40 percent and this is ba this is based on on it you know, engineering white papers and things that have been, um, you know, adopted uh, by the um, clearinghouse and, and PennDOT. Okay, so this is the intersection of North Third. Uh, down on the left-hand corner was the intersection prior to construction. Uh, the top left corner, uh, you know, our left, uh, is the, you can see the bump outs on, on the north side of the intersection. And on the uh, far right, um, even though the high visibility um, bars are not in, um, you can see the line painting, and we can see the um, can see the uh, bump outs on the uh, north side of the intersection. This is the intersection of North Third and Kelker. Um, on the right hand side is the intersection prior to construction, and on the lower left hand side is the intersection. Uh, Post-construction, you can see the road is, is milled and uh, 
you know, the line, the line painting and, and final signage would go in following, um, following pavement, which, uh, you know, I'll take this opportunity to mention that the side streets between Bois, I'm sorry, Boyd Alley and um, um, Munich were paved today. Uh, tomorrow, we will be paving the scratch course, and Thursday, Friday, the main line will be paved. So by this weekend, uh, that section of 3rd Street north of the uh, pack would be completely paved and ready for signing and pavement marking. Intersection of North 3rd and Harris. Um, this is the intersection. Uh, the bottom is prior to construction. And the top is uh, is the current condition as of uh, these photos were taken yesterday. Again, it, it was milled. Uh, pavement markings and signage will follow milling oper uh, paving operations. And then this is the final stop sign removal. This is the north third at the, uh, it's commonly called the Urban Meadow. Boyd, Boyd Street was vacated in a project called the Urban Meadow. Um, what we did was on this project, we raised that crosswalk and created a speed table. Uh, the stop sign are mid-block, uh, unwarranted. So those will be replaced with yield signage and, um, and pavement markings indicating that it's a raised speed table. What you, I'm sorry, I mean, we seriously cannot hear you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and I'm sitting Excuse me, here. excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Wait a minute, if you cannot hear him, just not, let me acknowledge me and I will make sure that he speaks up. You cannot holler, scream out. We have to respect him. If you cannot hear, let me know. Thank you, Mr. Majors. Thank you, thank you, Councilman. Um, let me you let me directly into the mic. Speak directly into the mic. Okay. I'll go over this uh, this last slide here. This is North Third Street. At hold on, hold on. Could you go back? Is everybody okay? Can we can we go back a slide or two? Do you want to go? Where, yes. Where do you want to go back to? Okay, Mr. Majors. Do you want to go back to Third and Emerald? Sure. Okay. Uh, so this is the, these are some photographs of Third and Emerald before, uh, courtesy of Google Earth, and um, and and some photographs of the current condition. So the lower left side is a Google Earth image of what uh, the intersection of Third and Emerald looked like before the Third Street Multimodal Project. The top left and the right are what they currently look like today. Uh, on the top left, you can see the um, bump out extensions on the north side of the intersection. And although the high visibility crosswalks are not in, uh, there are uh, parallel crosswalks now. That intersection will have high visibility crosswalks across North Third Street. This is a photograph. These are photographs of the intersection of North Third and Kelker. Uh, at the right-hand side is again a Google image of the um, pre-construction condition of uh, North Third and Kelker. In the lower left is the intersection uh, as of yesterday, with. Um, yeah, you can see that the surface is milled, but there's uh, bump outs at all four corners, which you know reduce the cartway by about 14 feet. Um, the final paving will be this week and followed by line painting. Again, will be high visibility crosswalks across North Third, which, which uh, studies show result in a 40% reduction in crashes, uh, pedestrian cra in crashes. Intersection of North Third and Harris. Uh, lower is the intersection uh, before the project. On the top is the intersection as it as it uh, was as of yesterday. Uh, today the uh, Harris tie-ins are paved. Uh, paving will be completed this week, and high visibility crosswalks will be installed. This one uh, also had bump outs installed at all four corners. And finally, this is North Street at uh, the Urban Meadow. Uh, it was actually Boyd Alley. It's a pedestrian meadow across from Hack. Uh, the Urban Meadow was w w what the project was called. They converted it uh, from an alley to a uh, pedestrian walkway. Mm -hmm. At this intersection, the Third Street project raised the crosswalk up, uh, commonly referred to as a speed table. And the pavement markings that will go in uh, fine after, after uh, paving would be the one shown on the right uh, with the, you know, indicating a, a raised uh, speed table. And there will also be um, the pedestrian crossing signage would stay 
and uh, yield, uh, yield signs would be installed. And that's uh, the end of the uh, presentation. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Council members, do you have any questions? Ms. Daniels, I'll start with you. Mm, uh, no. Mr. Majors. Okay. So according to this plan, if, if it, everything goes according, there will only be, there will be a, a street, well, a traffic light at 3rd and Riley, and then there won't be any other traffic calming no. device until you get to McClay. No, no not McClay. Uh, hold on. We, yeah. McClay. Yeah, yeah McClay. Right. Traffic calming devices, there are several. There are, or no there stop sign. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll oh. rephrase it. No stop signs between. Right. A stop cars. sign is not a traffic calming device. It, it should not be used as a traffic calming device okay. because if it is, it will lead to crashes. Okay. What is the stop sign? What is the use of the stop sign? The stop sign is to control traffic at an intersection. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't, so you said according to your study, it's not warranted to control traffic at any of those intersections. Correct. Okay. So n not even for, you know, I, I get trying to have a mix of traffic control devices and things to control things at an intersection to, to stop traffic. So we have stop signs and we have, you know, the bump outs, crosswalks, et cetera. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the public is, have, is having and raising some concerns because, uh, again, when we do other, when we see other projects that are coming along, there seems to be a lot more continued outreach. Uh, through the delays on this project, there weren't really any uh, any updates as to where things were going. I know, you know, for myself, you know, two years ago in 2017 when we, you know, did all the final approvals, that was great. But along that way, we did not hear, you know, all we got was there's, there's going to be a delay. Uh, and I understand 2018 because it was one of the wettest years on record. It was difficult to get some of the other things done. Uh, and so in terms of making the changes along the way, outside of a, the engineering study and uh, just so I just so we're clear the two studies were done when I think we have one that was 2016 so these <clears throat> yes these studies would have been done um, 2000 the, the study the study that's warranting this this change was it the 2016 study 2016. or is it the, the 1993 study because I think you sent us two so it's a 2016 is when the studies were done determining whether or not those stop signs at those intersections were warranted in conjunction with those um, studies was the decision to put in the traffic calming devices which were then presented at the public meeting. And by traffic calming devices, I mean right. as defined by PennDOT and Me city ordinances. Okay, meaning the bump outs. Correct. Crosswalks, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so could you give us the numbers from the traffic studies? You want, so the, 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 the original yeah, numbers? Like the, the, yeah, the numbers that justify the different intersections, like well, how many cars go on third versus Emerald versus Harris versus. So they're so far below the warrants. Um, so you have, uh, you have a two on, on third, uh, on the northern section, you have 252 a.m. peak and 300 p.m. peak. Um, you have to meet 2,000, 2,000 in an eight-hour period um, average, right? Emerald, uh, 40. Kelker, about 104. Uh, Boyd doesn't, doesn't have any. And Harris was 112. So we don't, we're, we're so far below the, the th warrant threshold for, um, for traffic flow. Is, no. that, is, you, is, is you, that 350 per hour, per hour or per day or? That is, those numbers were peak. Meaning? But if you, meaning the worst. Rush hours? Yeah, rush hour. But if you take, if you don't even meet it at peak, you won't meet it on a daily basis either. 
the crash data that we looked at uh, when the decision was made um, to include the removal in the plans, there were three at Emerald, there were three parked cars hit. Uh, at Kelker, there was a telephone pole hit. There was a side struck, uh, passing vehicles uh, struck one another. Uh, there was an, a two of those. And there was a rear end collision. At Harris, there was a pedestrian hit mid block after uh, a car had ran the stop sign. Um, and then there was a side swipe of a vehicle making an illegal U turn and, and a parked car hit. We didn't have any recorded at Boyd that I, that I could find. Now, when we looked at those, those crashes that occurred, those are the types of crashes that the studies have said, and, and when I say studies, I mean the white papers and things done by the traffic engineers and the PhDs and things in traffic safety. Those are the types of crashes that you would expect to occur when you have an unwarranted stop sign or unwarranted stop signs. Sorry, that does it for me. Oh. Come back to me. You, you, yeah, please. <laughs> Mr. Majors, are you done? I, I, I'm not done, but I, my, my train of thought was taken off, so okay, we'll move you. on to the next person, please. Go ahead, Mr. Alec. So just a few questions. Um, first, thank you for providing kind of the issues in the study. Um, but I'm going to remind you of something you said to us in the spring when we were approving the funds to fund the study for the 83 quarter is that sometimes we need to have a more personalized look at the impact of what those decisions might have on the people who are living right around there. Um, and I think this is a perfect example of that. Um, safety can be defined in multiple ways. What we feel just by living there and also to what we feel by way of enforcement of the laws that we have on the books. What strikes me about the PennDOT guidelines is I'm fairly certain that they go along with the speed limit guidelines and enforcement guidelines that they would put in place as well, that they are supposed to work in tandem. Mm -hmm. um, we do not do, and this is not you know, a complaint of our law enforcement, it's what happens in law enforcement, we do not do a lot with traffic enforcement by way of law enforcement. Um, and so I'd be very curious to know um, what speeds people still traverse through these areas and what they're using on because I think that's something that we might have the Pendite guidelines and I'm not going to dispute that. I'm not a scientist. I'm just someone who lives there. <laughs> um, but I do know that we do not spend enough time enforcing um, the speed limits that we have on the books, um, especially in some of these areas. And we see this, I mean, it's the most common complaint on Front Street. It's a common complaint on Second Street. It's a common complaint on Third Street. Um, and honestly, many other areas in the neighborhood, but since we're talking right now this quarter, I think it's something really to take into consideration. The other thing that I, I think that we could not foresee in 2015 when we approved the multimodal project is all the other competing projects that will be going on and the impact of those traffic patterns and what they would do particularly to the Third Street quarter. Um, you know, we know that there's going to be some changes to Second Street um, and that's going to have an impact on Third Street one way or the other, we just don't know what that's going to be. Um, and that makes me hesitant to want to make any hard sell changes, particularly to stop signs in particular. Second to, second to that, um, we also know with the construction that's going on with the courthouse on 6th Street and the burgeoning other projects are kind of in the works that honestly we'd like to see happen, right, from a development perspective. We also do not know that impact to the 3rd Street quarter in particular as well. Um, lastly, um, we also do know that in Midtown, it's, it's one of the neighborhoods in the city that has been growing. And so I think the population shift has an impact, obviously, on traffic patterns coming through. So if we're looking at studies from 2016 and now we're getting into 2020, I'd be curious to know what traffic patterns have actually changed due to an influx of residents have moved into the area. Um, so that still kind of remains. So it doesn't, I mean, while I appreciate the presentation, it does not really change my perspective um, right now, because I'd like to be the cautious one to say, I'd like to adopt a wait and see attitude. The bump outs, we want to see how they do work in actuality in conjunction with some of the stop signs that we have in place. Um, secondary to that, I think we also do not know the impact of some of the other things happening kind of in the Midtown area. Um, so I, I'd really caution us from moving in such a robust way. 
I get it. We like to rely on data. I'm a data person, but I'm also a real person. And I and my biggest concern is the minute those stop signs go out and the first accident we have and the first fatality that we have to look at, we'll be kicking ourselves and worried about what we could have done and what we should have done differently. Um, and so this is an area that I plead um, that we exercise as much caution as possible prior to moving forward. Um, and I think it's something that we just can't do in such a quick um, fashion, particularly when we know the project's kind of we hope project coming to a close, at least from the construction element of it, um, before we really know the real world impact of that. Um, and I don't think data can tell us that. I think time will. Just so I'm clear, the guidance that we utilized um, does say to study the effects of a stop sign removal 12 months after uh, the sign is removed. And you would look at the, you know, the same types of um, crash analysis, the traffic, the speeds, and those things. Um, as far as, you know, between 2016 and now, unfortunately it's been under construction and any types of data that we would um, utilize would be skewed because of the construction activities. Hence my point of waiting, really, when it comes down to it. But the only caution I would say is you have a lot of backup to properly remove the signs. You have nothing in the way of engineering analysis to say, go ahead and leave them in. So the same argument you presented for playing a wait and see is the same argument that I would use and say, you need to follow the engineering guidance that's provided from the Federal Highway Administration and PennDOT and, and the 70 or so traffic study, um, uh, white papers that have been written that say traffic uh, speeds are gonna increase. People are gonna accelerate from stop, time, stop sign to stop sign. People are not stopping now at these stop signs. I, I've witnessed it. I've been out on this project at least three days. Every day it's under construction, three days a week for every day it's under construction. Most people do not stop at these stop signs. Most people don't expect to see stop signs at these intersections. But keep in mind, most of this guidance comes from also being able to have adequate enforcement of posted limits and things like that too. And that's, I, for me, that's the big piece that's missing. We're not gonna, I mean, and I, I wish we were saying this. I'm saying this realistic, so Mark, I'm trying, I know you're probably getting a little nervous over there. But the reality, I mean, this is the reality. We're not stepping up enforcement, you know, and, and so if we're not stepping up enforcement, then I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with this aspect of it, despite what the guidelines say. But and I think, I think that's really where I want to exercise as much caution as possible in this. Yeah, but enforcement, the reality is enforcement at stop sign violations is really revenue generators for the city, not preventing accidents to begin with or after the fact. So, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that's been frustrating in this discussion is that stop signs are really useful to generate revenue for the city. So those who are wanting to stop signs to stay in, really, it really is about revenue generation. It's not about behavioral. Thing. No, I don't mean like uh, residents. Um, but, you know, the ped pedestrians, when, you, when pedestrians are walking and rely on those stop signs, they almost get run over. And I know for a fact there are some of you who are posting on Facebook who have blown through those stop signs on a regular basis and you're also complaining that um, that you don't want to stop signs out. So, like, I don't. I guess one of the things about the conversations that of the conversation that I'm just really, frankly, not getting is, you know, because I think behaviorally some of the things have already changed because of the physical structure of the roads now. Um, so whether the stop sign is there or not, like the bump outs will still slow things down, whatever. Um, but the stop signs themselves, uh, I, I'm really missing what the conversation is. Because from the municipal side, it really is about revenue. From the resident side, it, it is supposed to be a, for safety uh, for both pedestrians and drivers. But then we don't really care about the pedestrians. Because as long as they're run over, or like, we're, like we're fine as long as someone gets a ticket. I don't know. I, I'd rather the the running over not happened to begin with. I, I think 100% compliance is what's needed if we're ever going to reach uh, the goal, the vision zero goal. Uh, I mean, drivers have to comply. Pedestrians have to comply. We have to have enforcement to go along with what we're doing here tonight. Education, the engineering, every, you know, there's all the E's that have to be met in order to, uh, you know, reduce, reduce, well, eliminate 
uh, serious injuries and, and casualties on the city streets. Okay. Mr. Madsen. Yeah. Just so we're clear and for the record, uh, if we were to remove the stop signs, PennDOT would pull funding from our uh, projects if we were not, we would be officially not in compliance, is that correct? I don't know the, <clears throat> I don't know the answer to that. I do know that when we signed the grant agreement, we agreed to comply with PennDOT rules, regulations, and their design man in the design of the project and their manuals in the design of the project. That is in the grant agreement that the city executed. So if we were to keep the stop signs, what would happen? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, could Penn, you know, if we voluntarily breach the agreement, could PennDOT pull funding? Yeah, absolutely. Would they? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. okay. Um, come back. Take up some other questions. Ms. Bowers. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Your timeline was very helpful. As a new member of council, it sort of uh, provided me some historical background, so thank you for that. I just have a question regarding um, a point of data that you shared. You mentioned that the high visibility crosswalks, uh, with those, there's a 40% reduction in pedestrian crashes, but I was trying to figure out if that came from the white papers or outside studies that you mentioned, or if that came from either the 1993 or 2016 study? No, no that wouldn't have been a study conducted by, um, by the city. And, and, I, okay. and actually, the best person to answer that would be um, Andy Durr with Wallace Montgomery. OK, thank you. That data came from a website maintained I believe by Federal Highway <coughs> Administration called the Crash Modification Clearinghouse. And that's a repository for all kinds of traffic studies from roundabouts to traffic signals, stop signs, uh, any type of traffic control measure that could be implemented on a road. They have a study that looked at the effect of high visibility crosswalks on pedestrian safety. Okay. And this would have been performed by university professors, researchers mm -hmm. at, could be Penn State, could be Texas A&M. Um, they submit their peer reviewed papers that are peer reviewed by other national experts. Uh, they're presented in Washington DC, usually annually. And then once, once they get through the peer review process, they wind up in the crash modification clearinghouse. And so that's where the 40% reduction in, in crashes is what they've seen at sites across the country on average. Are there any perhaps statewide papers or regional papers just to sort of hone in on how? None that I'm aware of. Impacted? Okay. And are these? Are these studies current, or are they also dated? How often are the studies? The majority of the these website? papers are going to be in the last decade. The crash modification clearinghouse has been up for five, six, eight years, something like that. Okay. Um, most of the papers are going to be, I'm not, I don't recall seeing any that were, you know, 1970 or something. Most okay. of them are going to be in the 2000s, okay. so current studies. But, Thanks. excuse me, as far as the question about the regional significance, um, the PennDOT um, recognizes certain papers, uh, okay. those performed in, you know, similar, uh, similar areas. There are some papers on there from, you know, Shanghai, China that wouldn't be applicable here, you know. Um, so they're, right. they're definitely, definitely, this one here is definitely regionally significant okay. and, adopt, and uh, acknowledged by PennDOT as a good source. They have certain star categories associated with them as well. Uh, like a single star may not be a reliable study, okay. whereas something with a high... Um, How does the one that you referenced rate? I don't recall off the top of my head. Okay. I think that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowers. Mr. Allen. <clears throat> A question I thought of in addition to this, is there additional signage proposed in that quarter with posted speed limit or pedestrian walkway or other things that would go into place? 
so the way the way the Federal Highway uh, Administration works with signage is um, you don't want to bombard someone with what we call sign clutter, and so you sort of ramp up signage. Um, all the signage at these intersections are shown on the drawings, and we did bring a copy of the uh, signing pavement marking plans uh, as current in, in the back of the room. Um, there are no, if you mean like the pedestrian walk here signage, there are none currently planned, although that is an acceptable, um, that is a, an acceptable uh, tr uh, measure that could be implemented. Enhancement, let's call it an enhancement. It's as well as the um, in-street pedestrian crossing signs that you see some locations in the city, like um, Mark, Market Street between uh, Front and Second, that's the in-road um, in pedestrian uh, crossing sign. Uh, it's actually a very effective, um, a very effective tool as well. The, I mean, a larger scale concern, I think, still remains, and, and this is what's trying to be addressed by, I think, other modal projects and studies that are going on is the commuter inflow and outflow, you know, within the city. And, and I think it, it still changes kind of my existing kind of concern is as we change these traffic patterns, the undue influence that I'll have on some of the other residential streets. I mean, Third Street, for all intents and purposes, is, is a residential street, particularly when you get north of Riley all the way up through, um, you know, Division. And, and that's where, you know, that's, I think, part of where my biggest hang-up and concern about this is because the impact of the removal of stop sign occurs from Riley up to McClay specifically. Actually, no, up to Division specifically. It goes, yeah, it goes, yeah, it yeah. goes to McClay. It goes to the same stop, area. There's a yeah. stop light. And right. then from and McClay then, to Division. So I think that's where, with it being such a predominantly residential area, I think that's why you're seeing the tension and the nervousness from the residents you know, really that, and I, and I, and that's what I'm really trying to be very sensitive and caution to. Um, I mean, obviously using my voice as a resident up there, but I'm hearing um, from everyone else the same concern. Yeah, and um, just to be clear, <clears throat> Third Street is on the high injury network in the city, which is uh, four percent of city streets, uh, where 66 percent of the injuries and fatalities occur. Now there haven't been very many. Uh, uh, in that data set that we utilized, yeah. there haven't been the casualties on Fourth, on Third Street, but it is part of the high injury network. Correct. Which, if we go by the Vision Zero Action Plan, one of the action items listed was to remove um, or replace uh, non-manual and uniform traffic control devices, non-compliant signs along the high injury network. So. Um, in essence, removing unwarranted signs is part of the Vision Zero Action Plan to um, to reduce the fatalities and, and, and casualties. I'm sorry, fatalities and um, serious injuries on our, on our network. Yes, and right now, perfect example of how those plans and projects, you sounded just like an engineer, which I know that you are, so I don't mean that from a disrespectful person, like way, um, but that's a very scientific view. And I, I think that the, again, what we are missing in all of this is the impact of everything else that we're planning as part of these projects going forward. Um, you know, the, the concern, and, and I know that has been coming out with some of the conversations around Second Street from some of the neighboring neighborhoods in and around that is that impact. Um, and that's the big question mark. And I guess that's, that's my cautionary tale, is to be very reticent of making some of these moves until we really see the full depth of the impact of what these changes can make in the neighborhood. And that's, I mean, I, I just keep wanting to reinforce that. I might be saying that tongue blue in the face, but I, I, I just want to come back to that, um, that same perspective. Um, and, and again, on a more global scale, as we were doing these projects across the city, is to be very sensitive to um, the residents living in these neighborhoods. For far too long, and prior administrations and prior focus, we, we really catered to that commuter-driven in-and-out mentality. 
And, I, and I'm thrilled that we have changed that focus a little bit to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect our residents. I just want to make sure that we truly are doing that at the end of the day. And I, I mean, I don't want to belabor it. I will allow my colleagues you know, more time to speak. Well, thank you, Ms. Brown. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Wayne, for your presentation. Uh, you have, are you on? Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that there are other, uh, outside of the stop signs, at some of these intersections, we could consider other types of devices. You mentioned either the in-road uh, yield signs or some other, something other outside of a stop sign. But you said that those weren't being considered for these. Is there a reason why those aren't being considered? Uh, as uh, my colleague mentioned, uh, we know that commuters around Harrisburg will find another way to get out of the city. Uh, if we're going to, I don't we are exploring, I like to put this in the way it's supposed to be, we're exploring Second Street. Everyone talks like it's a done deal, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still something that has to come before council and we've had public meetings on it. There's been back and forth on whether folks agree with it, disagree with it. But again, the administration, well, I'll, let me I'll stop that, stop that, Wes, stop that. Uh, that needs to be, uh, that needs to be considered. But if we're going to move forward with uh, all these different projects, folks are going to find a way out of Harrisburg. We know that what there's construction on Third Street, people take a different way to get to where they need to go. If there's going to be construction on Second Street, using Third Street between McClay and to get to Riley is going to be a quick way for people to get out of the city. If they, and they're going to say, oh, well, there aren't any stop signs along this. There may be the bump outs. We may get some people slowing down, but they could, just as, the, as people tend to speed between stop sign to stop sign, they could speed between bump out, curb, you know, curb cut out to the next one at the intersection. So if we're going to do that, are we at least willing to explore some of those yield signs that we see at, uh, you know, we have yield at third and boy, I mean, outside of the, the stop sign across where the, the, uh, the traffic calming device is there, uh, which, you know, you have the yield sign because that's where hack was. So they will also not just have the stop signs, but they also have yield to pedestrians in that crosswalk. Are we going to explore those types of things along Third Street, and why weren't they included in in this initial? Uh, so, um, I'm going to reference another document. Um, <laughs> there's certain um, countermeasures by roadway characteristics when you have uh, uncontrolled crosswalks uh, that you would want to consider high visibility uh, crosswalk markings. Um, and adequate lighting are, for this particular application, that is speeds less than 30 miles an hour, where you have two, uh, a two-way road to cross. Um, so that's our, that is the appropriate countermeasure, and that is what we utilized. Uh, the way the guidance works with the signage that you're referencing is it just basically says, don't abuse the signage. So if we said every intersection at Third Street, we want to put pedestrian crossing signs, Obviously, that would not be effective because people would be numb to them. The fact that it is at Boyd seems to be the only location. It seems to work because it is that you know that pedestrian only pedestrian crossing signage on that corridor. Um, as I sit here today, I think it would be appropriate to put the pedestrian crossing signage and or in road pedestrian crossing signage at the other three locations. So at Harris, Kelker, and. Emerald. Emerald. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The other countermeasures also have warrant. Oh, well, the other countermeasures would be raised intersection, which we've done the bump outs, uh, pedestrian median refuge areas, which the bump outs sort of prevent, and uh, the, the hybrid uh, flashing beacon like we have on North Street, I mean, sorry, Market Street when you go under the um, underpass. Mm -hmm. That one actually has a warrant requirement, has a minimum pedestrian count that would have to be met. Uh, it's unlikely that that would be met, but those are the different countermeasures. Uh, the signage guidance that you know that I'm aware of just basically says don't abuse it because it will lose its effectiveness. Okay, so uh, from the engineering, so it sounds like you'd be willing to consider uh, some additional signage at Harris, Kelker, and Emerald outside of outside of the stop signs. That's, 
I'm going to, I have no issue with including the uh, pedestrian crossing signage. Um, I just want to check with uh, Wolf's Montgomery, whose uh, engineering seal is on these plans. Okay. Off the top of my head, I don't think there would be a problem with that. We would obviously want to review it, but I, I don't think there would be an issue with the um, the additional pedestrian warning signs at the crosswalks. I was also going to recommend the in-road, uh, they're like paddleboard signs, and those are very effective at, at crosswalks. At The issue is yield rate to pedestrians, and those are very effective at improving motorists yielding to pedestrians in the crosswalk. Um, Wayne hit on it, but the reason the federal and state guidance warn against overusing stop signs is because people start to ignore them, but also I, I think to your point, um, it, it can put people, pedestrians at risk because they assume the vehicles are going to stop. And if somebody doesn't stop and someone's out in the crosswalk, uh, then they're struck. And, and case, you know, there are cases where that's happened, and that's one of the reasons they're not recommended. What, what the process normally is, is you use this toolbox of countermeasures and you add one at a time. The thought, I think uh, Third Street was designed prior to the, the city adopting a lot of the NACTO stuff, uh, design guidelines coming out of New York City and prior to Vision Zero. Uh, at that time, we um, applied the bump outs and the high visibility crosswalks, thinking those were two effective countermeasures at reducing what we call pedestrian exposure. The bump outs reduce the distance children, elderly have to cross. Um, it moves them out where they have a better sight line to oncoming traffic. And so while the stop is going, is gone under the proposed scenario, um, the pedestrians have a much better opportunity to make a decision of when to cross and when not to cross. And they don't fall into the situation of um, believing the car is absolutely going to stop and then you have one time out of a million you have that tragedy where a child is struck or, or someone is hit by a motorist that didn't stop. Okay. Well, okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say this. Uh, again, we, my concern is the, the change in the flow of traffic that's going to occur with all these other projects happening. I grew up on Market Street in Harrisburg. The loss of McDevitt has significantly increased the speeds of people traveling along Market Street. And again, people always are trying to find a different way. If we're going to look at some of these other proposed changes to traffic, in particularly sp speaking to this particular project, so we're looking at the Third Street corridor, uh, people are going to find another way out. If we're going to if we're going to impact any of the other roads, so if we're going to impact Second Street, we're going to impact Sixth Street, we're going to impact Seventh Street. People are going to say, "Oh, well, I can go from." you know, 3rd and Riley to McClay, and that, or 3rd and McClay all the way out to Division and find another way out of Harrisburg. So again, I'm just hoping that we take caution and I'll turn it over to President Williams and also want to make sure that all the folks that are here have an opportunity to speak. Uh, well, no, I forgot one last thing. So the guidelines from PennDOT, are they enforceable? Like what, what, what gives them the ability to enforce a guideline or a manual? Is it like if to take, to be able to take funding if we were to remove the stop signs? Well, that would just, that, that language is in the, is in the grant agreement. The, the language in the grant agreement says, says that during the design of the project, we will comply with PennDOT um, publications and manuals. The guidance that I referenced was actually in the Pennsylvania Code. That's a regulation promulgated by PennDOT under their authority as the Department of Transportation and the legislative authority given to them when they adopted the Motor Vehicle Code. So there are two different. Okay. Right. So that. Yeah. So you're saying that's a reg. Could you could you provide the the reference in the reg? That's. And this this guideline. Modif clarifies, I guess, would be a better language, the federal guidance. So that PA code section. Now this is the guidance that 
engineers will utilize to determine whether a, a stop sign, a traffic signal, what have you, is, is warranted. Okay. I'll, I'll turn it over now. I know there's a lot of people that want to speak, but that's, that's okay. it's not, I'm not, not fully clear on that, but okay. Okay. All right. As I was going to state before, Wayne, thank you so much for your presentation. I certainly don't agree with you. Legally, I want an opinion. Uh, I was told by uh, our solicitor that he does not agree with you as well. Uh, to you, sir, you said about New York pattern, we should pattern that. No. The city of Harrisburg only has a population of 50,000. New York has about three million. We should never pattern our streets. Also, we should never assume as an, as an individual whether someone's gonna stop at a stop sign. We should, as human beings, be cautious. And not even to stop at a red light because cars zoom through the red light. And I don't know how you pattern this because in the Vision Zero it says that you, as the engineer, Redesign. So did you redesign Third Street so that we don't use stop signs? Third Street was redesigned. The, the, the purpose of Third Street was pedestrian safety. That was the, that was the whole purpose of the but project. Have, it was a we don't have a high volume of fatalities. We have high we, volume of fatalities, fatalities on State Street. Not Th Third Street. Third Street we is part of our Third is part of our Street high injury our network. Kids, the impact of children in that area. It also serves as a three way stop for the children's bus stop there. How twenty two thousand five? You have an ordinance by the Pennsylvania Department of Traffic calming handbook fourteen years ago. And we should still adhere to that 14 years ago. That city of Harrisburg has changed. Madam President, you, you, you agreed to adhere to it when you well, signed the we grant did not agreement. I know at that time, because here, public meeting number one, 2016, November 11, 2016, how many people from the neighborhood of this area attended that meeting? Do you know percentage? I, I don't have that information off the top of my head. Did you alert them to the fact or made them aware there was going to be a public meeting that would address the redesign of Third Street and the removal of the stop signs? The redesign of Third Street was, yes, I definitely made them aware of the redesign of Third Street. That, All those thir individuals in the neighborhood of Third Street and, and Calcutta Street that you're going to remove the signs? Every resident of the corridor was sent a letter signed by the mayor informing them that the street uh, was going to be redesigned. Well, we'll have an opportunity to ask some of those because I'm sure they're here. Prop uh, uh, pro property owner, I should okay. say. Okay, pardon me. Uh, I think it, they, the letters may have went to the property owner, maybe not the resident. I don't know for sure. Well, there's probably, okay. Hello, hello. I will give you an opportunity to speak. Each and every last one of you will have an opportunity to speak the way. If you have additional questions, you'll have an opportunity. We'll be here all night. He will answer every question. Uh, April 17th, I mean, April 12th of 2017, another public two, number two meeting. How many attendees from that neighborhood as well? Because my concern is that you had the meetings at an, at an appropriate place that these individuals who live in this neighborhood did not attend. It was attended by those who live in that area that you had the, the meeting at. So can you identify that for me? Because you have your meetings down at the Hack Building. We don't have no, representation. It was at the Broad Street. Pardon me? It was at the Broad Street Market. Okay, Broad Street Market. How many do you think attended from the neighborhood of Harris and We did Emerald? not. We did not poll the attendees to determine their uh, residency. I do know that there were members living on the corridor that um, provided comments and asked questions about the project. I just have a problem if I'm a homeowner in that area and they're going to take a stop sign from my area, which is involved the kids, and it's an urban area too, and it involves children in that area, I would be concerned that the city of Harrisburg does not extend that to me. 
and maybe I will forget because this is in 2016 and then again in 2017. That's three and two years ago. As a taxpayer, I would have a problem with you removing stop signs in that area. Now, I know you and I talked and you said that um, there's not 300 vehicles in an eight hour period that come through that area. An average of 300 per hour for an eight hour period, an average. To qualify for the, the stop sign to stay there, right? Correct. Okay. And we don't have five or more crashes in that area in a 12 month period. Am I correct? That's what you stated. How many crashes do you think we're going to have with no stop signs? And you can go zoom right straight from McClay Street to Division. Probably less than if you left them in I place. Doubt it when According it to the engineering when studies have that have been completed. Sign, when you have two stop areas for unloading and loading children off a bus, and not, a, not as, well, as well as a library, a public library, that the children go to each and every day. Now, I have another question for you. Do you consider Third Street as a high risk and high crash location? Third Street is on our high injury network all the way to Seneca Street, yes. Do you know how many injuries to date have you had? Do you have data to prove that? To date? I, you mean our data set was yeah. a five year data set? Well, if you there five years, just give me an estimate of how many casualties or high risk crash there were in that location. I don't think there were any casualties in that data set. I believe there was only one injury on North Third Street from Forrester to Seneca. Well, how do you Seneca. determine a high risk and high crash here? location and these are questions it's that the I, I think that, it would that be, the be it's the crash frequency well some of them are non-reportable when, when I so when, you, you when I say them? injury I meant I'm referring to serious injury not well, not injury there was only one. one serious injury there were injuries there were more injuries just not serious injuries and the, and this data is not I didn't make this data up. This is PennDOT data that is reported to them by our police department. Okay. Well, I don't agree with PennDOT either okay. because PennDOT makes a lot of decision on the highway and there's, there's casualties galore on 283, 83 and 81. And they've been doing the safety measures for the last 20 years and guess what? Statistic wise, I'm sure the crashes are even higher than it was before 20 years ago. But that's all the questions I have for now. I have some additional questions. I will take the time and open up to the public because I'm sure that they're antsy about some questions that they have in mind, especially since these are neighborhood residents. All right. Uh, we do have a question for you, Ron. So please, can you stay on a legal basis? Well, before we adjourn, I'll ask it. Before we adjourn, okay. Yes. And I think at this point, we need to have an opinion, a legal opinion on whether or not we can do this I'm not concerned about the monies that PennDOT is, is speaking of uh, in regards to a grant. I'm going to start uh, sure. to my right. Anyone to the right oh. can now come to the mic, please. Madam President, City Council. Uh, my name is Lonnie Devan. <clears throat> I live at 704 Melrose Street. Uh, I'm a lifelong Harrisburg resident, born and raised. This area that we're talking about, I grew up there. If you have not lived in that area, you have no idea what goes on. These studies or whatever they're saying by the Federal Highway Administration or whatever, they're probably done on geographical large metropolitan cities. Did you take the time to look at the residents of Harrisburg to do the studies here in Harrisburg? Not worrying about Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Scranton or wherever. Did you do it in Harrisburg, the residents? I have family members that live in that area. I have a mother, I have a handicapped sister. So when they go out on walks as far as that or whatever, what you're saying is basically when I get to McClay Street, there's a stop sign. I can go all the way to Division Street and put my foot on it. If I'm a pedestrian, I should hope they would be able to see me. I should hope you step out there and get hit. Oh, it's too late at that point. Coming from Forster Street, coming down, you have an elderly high rise right there at Harris, 3rd and Harris. So if you're someone who's handicapped that can't get across the street as well as other people can, the only reason why that bump was put out there by um, between Hack is because Hack was put there. That's the only reason why that was put there. I'm 47 years old. 
from the time that it's always been stop signs at Harris, once you got to Kelker, once you got to McClay Street, when you got down, you had Emerald Street. That's a busy intersection right there. You have a playground right up there at Fourth and Emerald. I lived on Emerald Street, 227. So all of that right there, when you say, and you're, you even acknowledge this and said, Third Street is a high traffic injury prone area. You, you said that. So why would you remove a stop sign from an area that you acknowledge is a high prone area? Just because the state gave some money? What you're saying is a life is not worth more than a dollar. I, I think, I believe I said that there are 70 professor studies that have been completed, at least 70, that say that the, leaving those stop signs in where they are not warranted will cause more crashes than removing them. If you have a safety measure in to prevent crashes, why would you remove it? You're looking at a study, you're saying a study, and these are individuals that don't live here. Uh, they sat up and did some collection of data, whatever was reported to them. The first guidance given by FHWA is that stop signs should not be used for speed control. That is Again, why they, that these is why are individuals that do not live here. They do not have, did, did they come visit the area to take a visual look? They're relying on data that was given to them, something that was given to them versus you step out there and look at that intersection. That's like me going to Philadelphia and I say, hey, Broad Street doesn't need it. But what you're saying is by this traffic law, that they're saying is you might as well remove every stop sign in the city of Harrisburg. That, that's not true, sir. What you're saying is by the numbers, what you're saying is you might as well remove every stop sign in the city of Harrisburg because it's not getting the traffic volume to warrant having a, tra a stop sign. The, the, Besides State Street where we had a fatality uh, less than six months ago. As far as that or whatever, only time we can, we're concerned with anything is when it's in a corridor where there's money involved. But because you're in a residential area, it's nothing. Perhaps I, I didn't clarify that. Volume is only one, one warrant. There's, there's multiple warrants that can be met. So you don't have to meet all of the warrants. It's not meeting one, it's just one. If you have one issue, one fatality, one crash, when you're coming down Emerald Street, you're gonna to have to sit there if you have a row of cars coming in, people leaving the city of Harrisburg with all these different things going on. Between 3rd Street and 6th Street, those are the only two roads that you can go clearly from Foster Street to Division Street. Only two streets. The other streets that are in Harrisburg, they have segmented. They have breakaways in between where there's a block or something that's in between there. 3rd Street is going to be congested. 2nd Street is going to be congested if they start making it into a two-way. Now you're going to have people coming up. So what you're telling is those people, those individuals, when they get to those intersections, you're going to create a bigger traffic jam. Because now I'm going to have to sit and wait until I can get through when I was at an intersection, whereas once you get there, this car, you were there, you go through, you go through. Traffic is flowing. But you're not going to have that once you, if you take away these stop signs. You're not going to have that. With all this traffic, people coming into Harrisburg, I worked in downtown Harrisburg. You got all the traffic coming into Harrisburg, and then everyone's trying to leave Harrisburg. They're trying to get out of Harrisburg. Just my suggestion is don't touch the stop signs. Leave them alone. They're a safety precaution. If you're a resident that lived in that area, you know there's a stop sign, you have some type of safety. Man. That, bump, that bump out you're talking about, all that does is prevent people from turning more. It's not gonna cut down the traffic on a straightaway path. And when you look at this plan, look at, your, look at your dad, your pictures right there. It's not gonna stop the traffic on a straightaway path. It's only stopping those individuals trying to make turns. That's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Duran. Next, please. Hello, Madam President and Council. My name is Sonia Clemens, and I live at 2204 North 3rd Street. And I'm just here to let you know I did not receive any letters stating that you were going to remove the stop signs between Woodbine and Emerald, where I live. I want to make you aware if Harrisburg accepted grant money, we did not accept it under the pretense that you would make our streets unsafe. I would like for you to understand that I live in that area. We were not told anything about you removing our stop signs. I don't want you to make our streets unsafe so the commuters that come into our city to work can get out safely. Please don't rush and take away our stop signs so they can get out of Harrisburg quickly. We didn't ask for them to come in here to work. So therefore, 
They must stop at every stop sign on their way out of Harrisburg because you chose to come here to work. Thank you. Next, please. Hi, my name is Matthew Coleman. I live in the 1900 block of Third Street. Um, my concern is first, as the young lady uh, before me said about the notifications. Um, we didn't get the letter until Saturday about this, uh, the meeting and stuff, uh, stuff like that happening. I feel that that's a, a little concerning for something that is going to affect so many people uh, in that area and safety-wise. I think this, uh, this needs to be tabled and looked at uh, a little bit uh, harder instead of rush for Friday for the signs to come down. Uh, I think that um, that move is just too quick for all the safety of the, the children, the pede uh, pedestrians are in that area, and all the other factors. Signage should be more, not less, uh, in that area with uh, signs that are not, stop signs that are covered by trees. Um, at the different corners that needs to be cut back. Uh, so those are some of the concerns that uh, I feel that we should look at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Next, please. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Henley. I live at 2646 North 5th Street in Harrisburg. I've been a resident there since 1982. Uh, stop signs are an imperative in our community. And the reason why is one, first and foremost, two of the signs you intend to remove are play areas. Now, how many of you would like to have a playground or a park in your neighborhood where there is no indication that you have to slow down or stop? How many of you that have made this decision, that have done this planning, that have done this study, live in a residential area? There is a difference between a highway and a residential area. And it's a distinct difference. And there, this is absurd, what you're doing just to get the federal dollars. If that's the case, you know, then I guess, what are we going to do? The traffic bumps are a nightmare on Elm Street for businesses on 3rd Street. Just come to the corner of North and 3rd. And it, that bump sits the hell out in the street when they're trying to make deliveries to the businesses along the street. You can't even access or egress the street behind it. I don't know who determined the nightmare on Elm Street that Harrisburg has, <laughs> but you individuals need to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better plan. Because I can't fathom how the trucks, when they make delivery in the downtown business district, can make a delivery with the damn bumps out in the middle of the street on 3rd Street. There are grocery stores, there are, are restaurants. It's insanity, and you need to stop the freaking insanity because we are the taxpayers, we live here, and it is our safety that you're putting at risk with the stupid decisions that you make. You wouldn't do it in your backyard, don't do it in ours. Madam President, City Council, I thank you very much for giving us all this opportunity. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your informative presentation. Um, this is a lot of change for us. Um, I'm sorry, my name is Julia Tilly. I live at 2016 Green Street. Um, this has been a lot of change for us residents, um, and it's been really hard driving around the city. There's a lot of emotions going on about this. Um, I think one of the reasons that stop signs are a big deal is because um, I'm older than I look, but we were taught in school that stop signs make us safe, and that's what we've taught our kids. Um, in preparation for this, presentation, um, for, to hear your presentation, I did do a little research. I understand that there um, has been a lot of research done and that maybe stop signs don't keep us as safe as we thought. So I'm wondering if this is something where we as a city need to do a little bit of reading and education. I'm not sure where I come down with the stop signs. Um, initially, I was totally for let's keep them. I'm not sure. I think I need to do a little more reading. I think it is really sudden to, to walk out the door and see a sign on a stop sign that's been there. I've been here 26 years, so some of you have been here a lot longer. Um, it's a big change. My question, though, is um, while a stop sign is not by definition um, a traffic calming device, it is a traffic control device. 
So in that way, it, it helps to inform traffic as to what they're supposed to do. And pedestrians are also considered traffic. So my question is, we don't meet that criteria um, for a stop sign to be at that location um, because we don't have enough traffic. Do we meet the criteria as a traffic control device to have the stop signs remain? Well, that that, the, that is the criteria. It is it's the for same criteria. Controlling traffic. That, uh, right. So I think the um, earlier a gentleman had mentioned not being able to turn onto Third Street, being you know vehicles stacking on Emerald or pedestrians not being able to cross because there's so much traffic volume they can't find that safe gap. That's an appropriate use of a stop sign. And that's what these, uh, this guidance is uh, geared to um, determine. Okay, and then my question then to the council, I'm not sure if this is, your, your, if you're the one to answer this or not, if this plan goes through and, this, and, the, um, and the stop signs go down, what measures will the city take to educate the residents, especially the children, um, to be able to look for other ways to safely cross, since I would guess that most of our kids have been taught to go to the corner and cross or to look for a stop sign. So you have an answer for that way? What do you have in place for our children's safety? So our, our engineering action plan does have an education and engagement section um, that can be utilized, and uh, that, that's not my that's not my department, but uh, certainly we have a plan in place to um, to provide that that sort of education and, and community engagement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Angela Johnson, and I live at twenty two twenty nine Green Street, and I've lived there for over fifty. Over 15 years, Can and you I speak never. Up a little bit, please. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Is that better? Yes. Speak and I had never received any notification. And Third and Emerald, Third and Woodbine is only a block from my home, so I never received any of the meet to go to the Broad Street Market or anything, because I would have been there. Um, one of the issues is that at one time in schools we had driver's education. They no longer teach that because it's not on the state standardized test. So you have generations of people who do not know what bump outs are or what they are for or why they're utilized and why they're not utilized. They don't know the rules of the road. You have people who ride bicycles that don't ride, know the rules of the road and motorcycles because that's no longer taught. And I know you said that you have an educational part in your pamphlet, but that's not going to be given to the schools to teach the children because it's not on the state standardized test. Mm -hmm. And since the schools only teach to the state standardized test, that education is not going to be given to them. The fear of a lot of people is that they know what stop means. Everyone knows what stop means because you're taught stop with the color red. You, you understand what that means. And you're working with a lot of fear from people who are afraid for their lives, who are afraid for their children, who are afraid for their pets. That you know, drivers will just drive and not stop. And, you know, I think PennDOT has done a really poor job in trying to alleviate that fear of residents. If you bring it down to just, you know, when you sign for the money and for the money, that will create a very hostile sense among all the residents because you have a large minority population. And when you equate minorities with money, with the history of this country, that then delves into a topic that a lot of people don't want to go into. And that creates a lot of hostility because you're placing money on their lives. And the history of this country has placed money on those minorities' lives. And we want to try to move forward from that by any means necessary. This plan of also taking away these stop signs will unfairly hinder our police force because they will be called for more accidents or more traffic jams or more issues or more things. And then when they show up, they'll be showing up in a very hostile environment, even more hostile. And they'll blame the police because the stop signs are there. They're not going to blame PennDOT because PennDOT's not there. They're going to blame the police because my child was hit because they took the stop sign away. And that's unfair to the police. That's unfair to tax them even more than what they already are taxed. We already have a very limited police force. And to tax them even more 
for safety issues is unfair. That takes them away from the real issues that they really need to be involved with. I don't agree with you taking away the stop signs. I, I don't. I have a pet that we have a stop sign at the corner of Green and Emerald, and they just blew some kids driving, smoking weed, blew right through it, and they ran over my tanner like he was nothing. Like he was nothing. And that was just my cat. You know, they blow through and they will run over someone's child, over an elderly person. You're dealing with a lot of fear in these communities. I do not think that your outreach and that your message has been received well at all by the residents in that area. And before you decide, well, you took the money and it's the money, it's the money, maybe you need to go back to the drawing board and do a better outreach to the residents and do more education. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Good evening, everybody. I'm Liz Gonzalez. I live in 1900 block of 3rd Street, where the neighborhood center is right there on Kelker. A block up is also another playground. The kids come from Green Street, Susquehanna Street, 2nd Street, and I see them all the time walking by. Just the other day, and I wish I'd have had my phone out so I could have recorded. A little kid almost got hit. And the, it was right there on Minnick Street, but just granted, if you take the um, stop sign on Kelker, now you're going from Raleigh to McClay Street, no stop sign. We have little kids, not the bigger kids, we have little kids, their parents let them go outside and play, thinking they could stop at the stop sign, look both ways before they cross. On my way to Family Dollar, same thing. I'm at a stop sign. A little girl's walking, she looks right back and forth. I'm telling her to go because I'm at a stop sign. You remove those stop signs, some kids don't have no way of getting across the street. And let's come back to the city. Because if my kid would get hit crossing the street because you move those stop signs, I'm coming for you. Because you moved them. My child's life is now gone. And I don't think y'all, y'all didn't do no outreach. I've been here since October. I didn't get anything about the stop signs. I'm at Family Dollar and I see the bright orange sign removing stop signs. Then you're bringing back the bus line. Where are they gonna stop at? The city bus comes down Third Street. So once the project is done, what's gonna happen with those? Because my son rides the bus from school, the city bus. So now when he gets off the bus, there's gonna be cars flying the, the bus stops uh, remain at Emerald. Emerald, you're asking? We have stop signs all down 3rd Street. But, yeah. I mean, the bus stop signs. Which, which, uh, I was going to answer your question about the bus the, stops. The bus stops. Are they going to remain there? There are, there are bus stops. They're changing. They're, They're changing. Some of the bus stops were consolidated or yeah. moved to the far side of the intersection, such as Verbeck got moved, uh, southbound got moved to the far side. Um, but we have the plans, we can look at them. So at the stop sign at, not the stop sign, the stop signs in the bus stop at 3rd and Kelker, when the kids get off the bus, the SciTech kids, because those are the ones who takes the city bus home into school. Kel What's Kel their safety? Kelker bus stop remains at Kelker. But, but the bus stop remains at Kelker. Okay, the bus stop remain at Kelker, but the stop sign is going to be removed. Well, the bus will have to stop, and the vehicles behind the bus will have to stop. There's no. But the bus, the bus is coming this way. If I'm going okay. towards, the bus is coming from downtown to McClay Street. So if I'm driving. You're talking about the opposing traffic. Yes. So now what's going to happen? That's why there's yield. Uh, the high visibility crosswalks. Y'all didn't it, think about that, did y'all? No, we did think about it. It's a state law to yield to a pedestrian in a crosswalk. Y'all didn't think about the bus stop signs. Bus stop, yes. Removing the stop yeah. signs and leaving the bus stop signs there is still going to have impact. It's going to have problems. Like I said, kids take those buses home from SciTech. They use those stop signs to get across the street. You might want to go back in those drawing books and redesign this because you're going to have a lot on your hands. And I'm not just saying you. I'm saying the people that came in the, um, inside to do the plan with you. It's not only you because it takes more than one person. So your whole group needs to go back in and redesign. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Next, please. 
Uh, good evening. We're on Richard Solo, third, I mean, excuse me, South 18th Street, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 1339. Well, you know, um, is a, any accident is an accident. It don't make a difference if it's a major one or it's not a major one. It's an accident, you know, because that person may could get hit by a car, truck, bus. It may not seem nothing like that, but going down the line, something major inside could be like a terminal bleed in the sun. He could pass away somewhere down the line. That's a life that you can't never get, you know. Um, in our neighborhoods, we need more stop signs and more warnings, you know, like new ones like suburbs area. Like, here goes a stop sign right here I was looking for, and I see them in the suburbs area with lights on them. They light up. These are new ones, up the code with the government. We don't have that in the city of Harrisburg. You know, you'll like to see. Use the money for that. Yeah, here you go. Look at that. Please, take a look at that, sir. Right. Yeah. That's the government. Okay. <laughs> you know? Get your Those are the signs that we Zoe. need. I, I just wanted to show. I don't know if okay. you or not. And it seems like we had the wrong person at the table, not trying to be disrespectful. You know, you say, well, I don't have the answer about this guy there. Well, we need to get the right person there to answer the questions. Right. And I would like to know where the mayor at. You know, it's like you see when, when it's time for a serious issue in, within the cities concerning with the residents, he's not here. He must be having coffee at his bookstore or something. Right. You know, so I don't, I don't know, but I'm just saying, you know, um, even down on 17th Street, when you're going down between Derry and... Um, in uh, Paxton Street, you have a company there, Macaroni Cheese, I believe so. You have a railroad track there, unsafe. Trains go through there, go over there. They don't have the rail coming down. They don't have the bell down there. They don't have nothing Brooklyn. saying the train could be moving. Brooklyn. None of that. None of that at all. I got pictures of it, too. I can show you afterwards. So, so pavement, you know? Brookwood is being paved in the appropriate uh, payment markings won't be installed. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's being dealt with, this, this, and that. But you want to take down stop signs, you know? And I'm just not understanding that. You know, we should put more stop signs up and, and worry about the safety of our kids and saying, hey, slow down speed limit with the flashing lights, too, like a lot of suburbs area have. It's like our neighborhoods get forget, forgot because we're in the urban. You know, people of color, being honest, you know? <laughs> And it's not right, and it's not fair. It don't make a difference what color skins you are or whatever. I pay taxes like y'all pay taxes. Some pay higher, some pay less. But taxes be paid and stuff. And we want to worry about our kids growing up as well. You know, the safety, the concerns, you know. We want the appropriate safety measure to be placed, not to take them down. That's, that's you all know? we want. We don't need to do that at all. That's all. You know, so, you need to, like. So that's all we want is the appropriate counter safety measures to be yeah, in place. Yeah, but it looked like you like, you have an excuse for every time you have an excuse for something. It's like when they say something, you oh, this, this, and that. Oh, well, this, this, and that. And, I, and I'm very shocked at you too, man. Not trying to point you out, but you know, just by hearing your conversation when you said something, I kind of catch it all. I had to look back on my tape. I'm very shocked. But let's worry about the citizens and, and the safety of them. You know, we don't need to take nothing down, honestly. We, we, our city kind of raggedy now a little because they don't want to put the money into the city anyway you know let's put the money into the city you know let's do the right thing here let's not make excuses and stuff y'all don't live here you know maybe y'all need to knock on doors and let people know what's going on in that area say hey excuse me um what do you think about this i have a survey or something you know a, a open line communication you know it's not all about the money to put in y'all pockets in your company, you know? It, it'll go a long way if we go all work together and do it the right way, you know? I would like to see those stop signs with the lights and stuff like that because some people are kind of blind. They don't see it. older people, senior citizens. You know, they might be on the wheelchair walking, and those are old signs, you know? It could be foggy, raining a lot. They could be walking and stuff and don't see that sign. But if they had that light and stuff, when you go up in this... Suburbs they have access to hand or wherever else. You see those type of lights out there now. They invest in and stuff. But you put a you put a light pole up there with the traffic light, you make sure there's a camera there in our neighborhood to, to make sure to catch crime and all of that. That's good too, because it's about safety. But okay. let's look at other avenues too, you know, to have safety. Stop signs, you know, year signs and have the railroad thing there when the train coming through, because it ain't nothing there. 
You know, it ain't nothing there at all for many, many, many years. Many years. You had the bridges over there that people could jump off, and there really no gates up there high enough or nothing like that. It's not protected, you know. But, you know, we definitely need better stop signs and keep our stop signs up. And don't put that money in your pocket. Ask Governor Trump, I mean, President Trump, to invest in that with that, you know, please. Not trying to be disrespectful, trying to be on you, but it's just like you make excuse after excuse. And we need to get the mayor up in here to listen to this as well. You know, it looked like he missed every, every, every important meeting with the community, and that's a shame. I got him this time because I took a picture of the whole room. He can't lie to me this time and say he was here. Thank you, know? you, Mr. Soto. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Soto. Oh, mercy. I think, in fairness to the mayor, I think this meeting was scheduled. Uh, and when he was on vacation, it was not scheduled uh, weeks in advance. There's no excuse. And, okay. and in addition, really want to talk about uh, the, the, uh, our city engineer. Uh, I think that he's had a very nice presentation. He answered all the questions. I, I've, I've worked with him for two years. I don't think that any decision he has made has ever been shaded by um, somebody's, the color of somebody's skin. Uh, so I want to make that clear. Uh, what we've done and what he, he continues to do is to do things that are driven not by anecdotes, but they're driven by um, analysis and um, uh, scientific data with regard to traffic safety. Uh, we're focusing in on uh, whether or not PennDOT will reclaim some of its monies if we do or do, if we don't do certain things. What we have to really focus on is that this is a part of a comprehensive plan that was initiated to, to not the comprehensive plan, a, com a comprehensive plan. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that, is, yeah. that was focused on, that was focused yeah, on, it is. It on is. pedestrian safety. And so when we talk about the removal of stop signs and the bumps out and what they're doing is increasing visibility of pedestrians so that they, they can make better decisions regarding crossing traffic and people are aware that they are there. So I just want to focus on that instead of whether or not PennDOT will reclaim some monies. So the focus of this was really to make about pedestrian safety along Third, third Street. So I wanted to make sure that people understood that and I, I wanted to make sure that people were not casting aspersions on our city engineer and his and his and, and what he was doing and 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 his um, uh, his rationale for doing it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Willie. I don't think anyone was uh, casting anything against him. Uh, if you're talking about safety, they have concerns because they don't see there's a safety measure in place taking down the stop signs. So I don't care if you talk all night about safety. You have not shown that it's it's a safety measure. And at that, I'll let the gentleman go because I know there's a, quite a few that want to speak. Good evening. My name is Danny Elliott. I live in 2300 block of Green Street. Been here for over 20 years. And I, I mean, I agree and I understand about the guidelines and the rules and the regulations and things like that. But um, we break laws all the time. You know what I mean? It's, it's not intentional, but we do break laws. It's like you said you was here for three days and you've seen several people run the stop sign. That's going to happen because I believe that the stop sign and any other sign is there for us making us aware and being conscious. See what I'm saying? And the reason why a lot of us run red lights or stop sign is because we'd be distracted by something, whether it's a phone, whether we're under the influence or something. So that's going to happen. But the concern is safety. That's the main concern. And the concern is safety of the children and our elderly that walks down the and main the two, the two stop signs you're talking about removing is the stop sign where there's playgrounds. There's one on 4th and Emerald, and there's one on 4th and Dolphin. And right there, you're talking about moving the stop signs there. And that's where most of the traffic, when it comes to certain times of the year, that's where the children, they go. And a lot of times, we send our children to the playgrounds. And some of them, they can get caught up in their conversation or whatever their activity and they could walk across the street not being aware. But the stop signs is to make us conscious that there is a stop sign. And most people that probably are not conscious about the stop sign is those who don't live in the city. Now, once, once they get aware and find that, you know, like I, I, I believe that someone said they'll find another route to get past the traffic. 
But once they find that route, they're going to be conscious of that stop sign. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to start slowing down. So I understand that as far as people run stop signs and red lights and things, that's what we, they, they be, people we do it. Not intentionally, but we're going to do it. But that's, that don't take away the fact that you should remove the stop signs. Because what, cause you said you've been there for three, um, three days, I think you uh, said. Three days a week for two years. Okay. And okay I didn't okay. say some people run. Okay. I said most people run that stop sign. Most people. Okay. Okay, most people. Okay. For two years. Okay. I get that. Three days for two years. But I've been living there for 21 years, maybe more, and the stop sign helped a lot. Like there's a stop sign right there on um, Green and Emerald. Now, the reason why that stop sign was placed there is because Green Street is really residential. I mean, all of it's residential, but there was no stop sign from, from, I think it was Green and Emerald, no, Green and Seneca, and there was no other stop sign until Green and McClay. Now, this, oh, that's, a, that's a long stretch right there. So because there was a lot of accident there, because even though they had the stop sign on Green and Emerald coming down Emerald Street, there wasn't none going, going towards McClay, I mean, yeah, towards McClay Street. So there was a lot of accidents going on, and a lot of accidents probably occur because the fact that people are distracted. You know what I mean? Things is going to happen. We get that. Things is going to happen. People going to run stop signs. People going to run, I mean, break law. But we can't make a decision on that two years and three days a week. See, we can't make that decision, especially with people who've been living over the, living in the, um, living in the um, area for 20-something years. Walk all around through that area. I mean, I walked all through that area. So I understand that. But I, I mean, your two years and your three days a week, I mean, that's good. You know, you show some concern. But, but we, we've been there for a long, way, way longer than some two years. And like I said, the stop sign, that's going to help. That's going to help not only the children, but it's going to make other people conscious of that, you know, there, there, there's people right. that, residents that walk there, and they need that stop sign to cross over Third Street or cross over Emerald Street, because it's a four, I think it's a three-way three -way stop sign. But see, that, that gives people an opportunity, at least, to, at least to be conscious of it. You know what I mean? There's people going to still run it. They're going to still run that stop sign. But they, at least they're going to be conscious of it, because, I mean, there's other places that, areas that I'm not familiar with. Sometimes I get distracted, and I run the stop sign. But when I see it, I think, oh, man, that's a stop sign. So, you know, so next time I come through that area, now I'm aware of it, unless I'm get distracted again and run it again. That's, but my intention wasn't to run it. It's just that I was distracted. Yeah, thank you. I like some order, please. I, I know, Mr. Soda, you have some other things to say, but please. But please I, I know, I know ma'am, wait a minute, because you came from this side, and I need to see if anyone in the middle would like to speak first. Oh, okay. Okay, I want to be fair. I want to be fair. If it's okay, I'll let her go, but I know you've been waiting patiently for this side. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Gloria Martin Roberts, 2400 North 3rd Street. That's okay. Thank you for having this meeting, and the Honorable David Matson, thank you for notification, because I also did not receive any notification regarding the removal of the stop signs. I happened to be at the stop sign, and I saw the sign saying that the stop sign was going to be removed. Now, I've lived at this address for over 35 years. One thing that concerns me before I get into my comments is every time this city does a project on 3rd Street, they stop short of the 2400 block as though they're going into the jungle or something after that point. From the 2400 block to division, nothing gets done. Nothing gets done. It stops right there. I don't understand the mentality. Because let me tell you what happens in the 2400 block. We have a whole lot of children that go to that Dauphin County Library every day that it's open. Not only do we have children there, we have a lot of adults. We have a lot of people to come outside of the city, into the city. Okay, to that library. Now, beyond that, we have the dollar store down the street. We have the psychiatric institute, which I think somebody needs to go to that came up with this plan. 
We have that psychiatric institute in the next block, in the 2500 block, okay? We have two other public facilities that are accessible to people to have events, okay? Zembo Moss, okay, being one of them. And so people drive up Third Street, even with the stop signs now, like bats out of hell. They honestly do. You have children on a daily basis. I go out there like I work for the cops, asking children, they're on their bikes, they're not paying attention because they're children, okay, and they're riding in the middle of the street. Do you really think that people driving those cars care? They don't. I'm out there almost every day asking those children to get out of the streets, okay? People park their car, by the way, on the residential side where we're supposed to have um, residential parking, but nobody gets a ticket but me and my husband, and we live there. So we have people getting out of their cars, crossing the street over to the library. Don't stop at Kelker Street. If we are going to do something about uh, uh, vehicular traffic in the city, why don't you go all the way to the end of Division Street? Because if they change the traffic pattern on 2nd Street, that's exactly where the traffic is going to begin at Division because they'll turn off Front Street, they'll come up to 3rd and Division, and they're going to go south on 3rd like bats out of Haiti. Okay? Now, they don't have anything to deter them. Okay? We have no protection for our citizens, especially our children. Now, I had to write some notes, because you know, you all were talking about a lot of stuff. But let me tell you something. It is revenue. It is revenue to have our, it's because this is a serious public safety issue. But yeah, it's a revenue generator if people get caught for not stopping at a stop sign. So go after the revenue. The city can certainly use it. But if you have no compliance, you have no compliance because there's no enforcement. That's the problem. There's no enforcement. Okay? And, you know, if you have these walkways you're talking about, Wayne. Cross crosswalks? It, yeah, you're talking about putting, like, uh, crosswalks in. Well, if they're not painted and kept up, maintained, it'll be just like the uh, yellow division on the streets, where we haven't had for a long, long time on for Third Street, if you all can remember. So people just drive in the middle of the street. You gotta tell people, get over, okay? So if these kinds of things aren't maintained, they're for not, okay? Now, I, I wrote a letter or a memo, an email to you through city council office in April specifically asking for a speed, well, I said, I think I said C speed bump and I was given the education, the bump is a hump. I don't care if it's a hump, a bump, or a lump. I asked for it to be put in play in, in front of the library to slow the traffic down because I'm telling you, you know, one night, evening I came home about 10 o'clock, I'd been to the grocery store. I was em taking the groceries out of my trunk. This is the truth. Two young men in pretty red sports cars pull up just about where I was parked in front of my house, side by side, so you know one was in the left lane. Okay, that's the oncoming lane going south on third. And then they began to have a race. That could have been, it was late, that's why you didn't have a lot of traffic, but that could have been a horrible accident for anybody who was coming down Third Street that didn't know they wanted to have a race party. Not race color, race car, okay? They drive very fast on North Third Street. Please don't underestimate that. They drive very fast. The data that you have provided to us, the studies that you have provided, are not comparing apples with apples. I don't live in China. I live in Harrisburg. I don't live in Texas. I live in the city of Harrisburg. The data and those studies mean nothing to me, 
absolutely nothing to me. And yes, we have people that roll through stop signs. They don't stop, or they just come through the stop signs. Actually, I was a little enchanted because when I saw the sign that these stop signs were going to remove, I said, oh man, somebody's really bright in the city. They're going to give us a traffic light. <laughs> I can dream. I can only dream. I'm telling you right now, this is a bad idea. And the city is going to be faced with some lawsuits if you remove these stop, stop signs and pedestrians are going to be harmed. And, and I agree with you, there's no little accident. An accident is an accident. I don't, I don't really care. Okay, that's exactly correct. We cannot take this for granted. This is very, 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 very serious. I know this council will make that decision. I th believe all of you will make the right decision, but I'm telling you right now, I, and by the way, sitting out for what, a couple days, for two years, 35 years, 35 years in that neighborhood, and the traffic is already crazy. You remove those stop signs, I don't know how many people will decide to bring their sports car and drag at certain times of the night because they know there's no enforcement. I sat in your seats. Don't pass laws if they're not going to be enforced. Because what's the sense? Mm -hmm. Don't pass laws if they're not going to be enforced. This is not an excuse. They have to be enforced. And certain, certain, certain blocks in our city have higher traffic, much more speeding, Deploy some of these law enforcement officers out there at certain times of the day, okay? And watch our revenue grow. And give it all to law enforcement, because if they're going to be there to enforce, put it in their budget. It'll help us out. Thank you. Thank you. Gina Roberson, and I'm representing the new property that we purchased at 2200 North 3rd Street. Uh, right before Emerald. Um, I agree with what everyone said about the traffic and the flow and then, you know, just, it just doesn't make sense. And, um, but as far as the engineer, I could say, you know, for your three days and your two years, you could have knocked on everyone's door and got their opinion of this um, wonderful ideal that the National Geographic of engineers and PennDOT people said, we should do this. You would have gotten valuable feedback from that particular community to say, you gonna take the stop, that stop signs down for my kids crossing the street? I, I'm just saying, I, I I'm just saying. I think there's a misunderstanding that this is done by vote. This is, this is a data-driven design. This has nothing to do with whether someone wants it or not. This was a data-driven approach to design. So if I'm understanding you correctly, let me, let, me, let me see if I'm understanding you correctly. Whether we want it or not, you do. No, I don't want, I only, I'm no, a professional see, you, engineer. What, I have guidelines that I follow. I have studies that I uh, use as guidance. There, we hired a uh, design firm to look at it. I don't, I don't live on Third Street. I honestly, it's, it doesn't make a difference to me. All I'm saying, in my professional opinion, see, that's, see, that's in my what we professional are. opinion, the problem having here. these signs see, will make it more finish, dangerous. Come on, let's, let's have some order here now. Um, he's trying to explain, and, and just give him a minute to explain. And then, Ms. Uh, Johnson, you, you can rebuttal. I, I mean, if a doctor says, don't smoke, it's bad for your health, does he, you know, I, I honestly, I take it back. I really do care about a safety of the city. I really do. And, that, and that's the whole, I mean, we, we have this vision zero policy that I, uh, action plan and commitment that I hope city council will adopt some, someday soon. Um, it's every day, every day, every minute of my day is focused on, on safety. And all the data that I'm looking at, that I'm reading, and I'm double checking, you know, the information is telling me that ha leaving these stop signs in will make the corridor will leave, you know, more dangerous. That, that's, that's all I'm saying. And so we implemented additional counter safety measures that are appropriate, appropriate counter safety measures, 
And, and that's where we're at today. And, and, and your point is taking about um, uh, uh, the public notice. Honestly, honestly, because of the overwhelming documentation saying, the, even the original studies say this is not warranted and should not be installed, and they were installed anyway. So, you know, we have over 200 and some signs being, well, hundreds of signs being removed and replaced on this job. There's, there's a lane being taken away on, on South 3rd Street, south of Forster. Of all the controversial things, this was not, this was not at the top, you know, uh, honestly. Okay. So, so then, then let me fall back for a second and say, if you think that I may have been attacking you, let me apologize, because I'm not. That's not my intention. I'm talking about things that you are saying, that you've reported, that what you went on to come up with your study findings. That's what I'm commenting on. So if you felt like I was attacking you, I'm sorry, because that was not my intention. But what I am saying is I do not agree with your findings, because you sat there for two years, because this is what I do know. People start out with good intentions. And as you start getting into your intentions, you say, man, this ain't going to work because X, Y, and Z. I want to know when did the light bulb go off in your head, the committee, to say, yeah, this might not work here. I know what they do in China and Texas and New York. But Third Street in Harrisburg, this is not conducive, for our, uh, conducive to our environment to take the stop signs out where kids are. Now, you, you got the, the nice little bump outs and the, and the nice little flower potted things. My car almost got hit several times trying to inch out of Woodbine Street on the third street coming from Emerald towards. I, 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 I'm scared. I, I want to turn around into the church parking lot and go down the front street to come up because I can't see coming out because of that bump out stuff. I am, I, I got a, somebody in the car with me and I say, stand outside so, you can, so I can see if I can get across the street. And I'm just trying to turn right. All I'm saying is I love the beautification project. I love all that stuff. But what I am saying is it just doesn't make sense to the people, the real live people, not the numbers, not your stats, not all your from 2005 in 1999, all the other dates you guys were quoting, none of that makes sense to the people that live there. And I'm saying, if you would have just taken that into consideration, instead of counting how many cars rode by, now that is for you, because you did say that's what you did, correct? Yeah, that's, okay. that, that's, that's, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's fine. We go to crash out. Of yeah, this. I got you. So I'm just using that, because that's what you said. Instead of sitting there for two years, Knock on my door. Listen, we're doing a study, and we're thinking about, because you're still thinking about it, right? Because this is not a done deal, right? Where each intersection was designed. No, 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 I'm saying, but right now you're still thinking about it. It's not a done deal, correct? Well, no, this has been, well, this has been part of the project since the design, somewhere in the design. The stop signs are still on the ground, though, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, so, so they didn't come out yet. So, but I'm just saying, I could have knocked on the door and said, listen, we're thinking about doing X, Y, and Z, to get some feedback from the people in the community. The other thing that I know, because you guys said something about if you don't take the signs up and we got grant money, what I do know as the former grant writer for the city of Harrisburg, you can always change the grant. You can say, you know what, we thought about it, we need to leave those stop signs there. You can do that. And listen, and they'll let you keep the money. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I, they will. I, don't know. I, I, won't, I, won't I, I know what you're saying. I'm telling you, council members, that's what you guys can do. You can contact them and say, listen, we need them stop signs. And you just do uh, an addendum, amendment, excuse me. You amend the grant and say, this is what we need to do. We thought we wanted this, but this is what really works. We do it all the time. And then they say, you know what? We didn't take that into consideration either. And you get to keep the money. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Thanks, please. Uh, Don Barnett, 1740 Fulton Street. Uh, the signs say that the signs will be coming down on Friday. I'm assuming that that is still the plan. Is that correct? Actually, no. Um, they were, were supposed to come down 
um, consistent with the signing and, um, I'm sorry, the pavement marking, so that were to be done. Um, but because of the rain and the delay on the paving, um, that would be, it's a, we're a week behind. So that was a two week, that was a two week notice that we had um, oh, put up. Okay. That, that's, that notice that we put on the sign is not a PennDOT requirement or an MQTCD requirement. It's a, it was a recommendation in one of the studies that we give a little a two week advance notice and, and so that's where those um, that's where those signs came up. Unfortunately, our contractor, because of the weather, was not able to adhere to the um, the, the anticipated timeline. Okay. The uh, data that you presented, I assume, is based on since 2016, sometime after 2016. Um, the crash data that I um, mentioned in, in my presentation was yes. January 1, 2013 to August 13th. I pulled, I pulled the latest, so August 13th of 2019, but most of the um, crash data uh, was in the, two, you know, the early. There hasn't mm -hmm. been actually a lot of crash data ever since the UGI construction and the, and the multimodal project. So it's, it's mostly in that January 2013 to um, to January, to the 16th, November 16th, uh, 2016. And I would hazard a guess there probably isn't too much crash data since uh, probably, I don't know, since uh, maybe 2005. The reason I, when the, no, when the actually, signs, when the signs have been in it's, place. It's on the high end, it's actually on the high injury network, uh, the corridor is, and there is actually a lot of crash data not a lot, not a lot of high injury um, crashes on North Third Street. Okay. The reason I'm bringing up the dates of the data, I moved into the city in uh, July of 2004, and I live in a area uh, that has an intersection, another intersection with Calker. Uh, I understand uh, when I moved in, Third Street had basically just uh, signs on one direction. I'm not quite sure what direction it was. I'm thinking it was Calker. East, west, yes. And that there were no signs on Third at that time. Correct. <clears throat> and I was told by people who lived in the area that there were a lot of accidents. When I, after I moved in uh, in 2004, at this other s intersection along Calker, a different intersection, there was also just two signs. Every month, there were accidents at that intersection, almost like nonstop. So, you know, I got together a petition to do a traffic study to get a four-way stop and there was a four-way stop put in. And I, do, I am not aware of any accidents at all since that four-way stop was put in. If these signs are taken out, you have to have uh, better means of slowing the traffic because once you have a nice smooth roadway, mm -hmm. you're gonna have people zooming. Yes. The only way to slow the traffic is to keep the potholes. <laughs> 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 That's true. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, Your name, please, sir. Joshua Barker. I live at 2152 Green Street um, between Woodbine, Woodbine and Green on that corner. There was an accident over there two weeks ago. Um, and we frequently, as uh, the young lady was speaking about, see kids playing on those streets, like just freely. Me and my wife just watched them playing with their bikes on corners. Like what, what's wrong with these kids? They, they're just driving their bikes. There's no stop sign going down green. It's just like, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you. Um, as I said, I'm originally from New York. I was on some transportation committees. Um, I don't think you should ever use New York as a reference because our traffic and our drivers are horrible, so don't bring them up. 
Um, so my point is, um, my daughter also catches the bus. She goes to um, John Harris. Um, and that, that street third is very dangerous. Um, and, you know, I think stop signs to be added. I'm always suggesting that there should be double stop signs. Um, because apparently when there's one stop sign, there's no respect for the, the speed with the, stop, um, the, the, the one that doesn't have the stop sign. So you're gonna have, as you smooth out the road, you'll have racing, you'll have, you know, when people see smooth roads, they wanna go faster. So that's, that's a point of concern. So, you know, just with that being said, um, I think the stop signs, stop signs should be added, not taken away. And that's, that, that, that should be really pointed out because um, there's too much kids just riding around, walking around on these streets out here, you know, and not paying attention. It's, it's very frequent. I look at it every day on, on how the kids attend to the street, just, just walking out in the street. And that, that avenue itself has a lot of kids that go on that street. So, you know, um, you know there's a lot of points being made, and, and I think that, you know, Statistics, as I said, I was on a transportation committee. Statistics don't really hold any value. You know, they, they're just statistics. And, um, you know, we can go by what one city has and one other city has, but until you're there dealing with it, it really doesn't matter. You have to really be observant of what's really going on in the community. That's true. Right. Uh, my name's Nevin Mindel, and I live at 2550 North 3rd Street. Actually, I'd like to start out with a simple, very direct question. Um, council was confronted at its last meeting by any number of citizens who <coughs> expressed objection to the removal of the stop signs. And I would venture to say that I've heard barely a uh, complaint about the possibility, uh, uh, yeah, barely any support here at this meeting, uh, short of I think I heard one woman said she needs to think a little bit, but I haven't heard council people say they want that to happen <coughs> or anybody here. I wanna know with a yes or no answer, a straight up answer, are you taking those stop signs down as soon as you're able to do it? No. <laughs> Regardless of what has been said. Sir, I, I can't. I don't work in a bubble. I can't, I work as, I work at the pleasure of city council. My advice to them is to take them out. If they insist on keeping them up at their own peril, whatever that might mean, then that is their decision. This council approves the traffic control plans for the city of Harrisburg. All right, then if I understand you correctly and you can clarify, you will not take those stop signs down until council votes either up or down on that decision? So these stop signs were never, I don't believe these stop signs were ever authorized to begin with. So, but for clarity, it would be helpful if council would vote and give clear direction on what to do. I'm, I'm asking you a question. Listen, I've been in government for a long time. I worked at the state level. I did public policy work, okay? I know how to obfuscate in a conversation. I'm not looking for obfuscation. I'm looking for a very clear answer. Sir, I, I, I am here agreement. telling you that I will not remove those stop signs until I get direction from council if you promise not to run those stop signs every other day. Yes, please. Uh, that's fine, I'll tell you what. Uh, I can tell you one thing for sure since you brought up the running of the stop signs. I can tell you that with the stop signs there, there may be people who do run them, and I live on 3rd thir uh, no, Street. Sorry, you do run them. You've almost hit me on a few occasions running them, so please. What's that? I've never... Yeah, so please what? stop at the stop sign. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Miss Daniels. Miss Daniels. Mr. Midland. I'm going to... Wait a minute, Mr. Majors. Miss Daniels, please. And Mr. Majors, please. Wayne... You don't have to converse with him anymore. He asked you a question. You said council will make the decision. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's leave it like that, Mr. Midland. That's fine. You've got your answer. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to give an open chance for right. everybody to express I'll, 
their concern about the stop signs. Well, I just want Council, to make please wait a Mr. Minister. Council, please refrain from saying anything else until all of the participants had an opportunity. I'll give you another chance to speak at the end of the meeting. Right. Are you done, Mr. Mitten? No, no, I have more remarks. Okay. Okay, and I'd like to have the time to do it as others have. Um, I, can, I can tell you I don't not stop at a stop sign. I stop at the stop signs. I live uh, just a couple blocks up at Third and Radnor. I go up and down Green Street routinely. I do know that there are occasions where there are people who run a stop sign, but I can tell you that by and large, my observation being on that street every day is that generally people stop. And I can tell you that at, Green, at, at Emerald Street, that's really critical because there are a lot of kids who aren't really paying attention, and if it weren't for the fact that the traffic stopped and they had a stop sign to go across the street, it's very likely there would be some very serious problems at that location. And I can tell you because I have experienced watching it almost happen even with the stop sign, stop sign there. Um, guidance is guidance, by the way, from my observation, and what we need here is common sense, not ivory tower engineering. Third Street is not an artery. It's, a, it's not a commuter artery. It's a local street. But uh, th that's really it's classified what that as a is. collector, as an urban collector. But uh, I'm not going to quibble over. I'm going to tell you that it, it it's is not. An, it's not an arterial, though. You are correct. Yeah, it's not an artery. And the fact of the matter is, is that if you drive that street, you're going to find that getting two cars past it um, is okay at this point. I don't know how buses are going to work. Right. Uh, I seriously doubt. I see bikes up above where we are. But I don't see many bikes down further because, quite frankly, they get hit. Okay, uh, and I think that by taking out those stop signs, you'd actually make pedestrian traffic uh, worse. So I don't know what multimodal means. Um, what I would say is, is that um, there was a two-hour notice for a Seventh Street conversation, and when the folks from the uh, community from uptown got to the to the meeting at the at the, at the Y, we were told um, that uh, the stakeholders had already had a meeting, although I don't know who the stakeholders are, um, if it isn't the neighborhood. Um, there was a study on Division Street, uh, but then I was told that the Division Street thing was, um, uh, was just a study that was done. Uh, the city didn't really have anything to do with it. It was at one of the universities. I don't remember if it was Temple or, uh, or Harrisburg University. Um, and the comment in the, in, the, in the Berg was that there was no link between second and third. But in fact, here's a report that puts it all together. Um, there's commentary in here on 7th Street. There's commentary here on 6th Street. There's commentary here on 3rd Street. There's commentary here on 2nd Street. There's even commentary in here about a bridge going across Division Street, all of which creates a whole different dynamic about what's going on. So when somebody says in the public that there's no connection, you've got to ask the question about whether or not there's any honesty and integrity in the way this issue is being, is being handled. The fact of the matter is, is that what we need is, and all the information that we've gotten here has basically been static and many of council brought up the question. There are computer models available that can tell you where the traffic will flow because it flows like um, hydrology, as I'm told by traffic engineers, okay? Including this conversation, by the way, that I've had with the Secretary of Transportation. So I know if he's lying to me there, and it's not the current one, uh, it was a little while back, well, that, there's, that there's a problem going on, okay? okay? Uh, we, Wait a second. So okay, if, you wanna wanna... Know, if you wanna know what's gonna happen on 2nd Street once you shut it down, and you wanna know where the traffic is gonna go and where the flow is gonna happen, they can tell you that. That's not what anything has been described here. So if you really want to know what's going to happen when you make Second Street two ways, and don't tell me we're not going to get there because all the stuff is moving right along, okay? So Second Street's going to become two ways, one way or another. The traffic's going to get pushed off. There are studies, and I bet y'all have seen them, 
that'll tell you exactly how much traffic will go down Third Street or expect to based on traffic flow models that are based on how water flows, quite frankly, if I understand the dynamics correctly. And I think that that's the kind of thing that we need to look at. I can tell you that when uh, the police started to police Second Street when the bars got out um, downtown, the folks would start driving down Third Street, and I can tell you that one woman smacked into a tree in front of Polyclinic Hospital, cars got hit, all kinds of stuff took place on Third Street by the constriction of traffic on Second Street, and that's with the stop signs that are there. And I can tell you as a fact that even though it may very well be that some people drive through a stop sign, you are for sure going to have an unrestricted flow when you take the stop signs out. And if you really want to do multimodal, and I'm going to, this is at the end of it, I promise. Uh, the, the thing is, is that leave the stop signs in. But if you really want to do multimodal, why aren't we talking about bus rapid transit or jitney service or other visionary things that will help relieve the amount of traffic that comes flowing through this city by people who don't live here that we're constantly being told to accommodate. I think it's about time that they learned how to accommodate to our needs, all right? And that includes how do you intercept the traffic and bring it through town in a mass transit fashion, which is exactly what really ought to be happening. And that's not at all what's here, never mind what we talk about multimodal. So um, if you would, I would say, council, please say vote no on this. All right, please vote no on this. Tell them to go back and make the whole thing understandable, including traffic flow when they know where the expected flow is going to go and let them show you exactly where it's going to go because they have models that can tell you if you shrink it on Second Street, this is where it's going to flow. All right, and let's get some multimodal stuff for real in here, including some transit stuff. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. We, that, the traffic um, study for Second Street was presented uh, multiple public meetings and does show an increase in traffic on uh, North Third Street. I think it's 30 percent, 30 percent increase. That's the model that's being referred to. We've shared that. Um, but at the time the Third Street project was being designed, uh, when those stop signs came out as part of the project, that was not, that was that model hadn't been completed. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you, uh, Wayne. Mr. Majors, do you want to say something real quick? Uh, first, I just want to apologize. For, I was just trying to get some order after okay. a, a comment, so that was my only comment earlier. But okay. I'll let every other member of the public speak first. So, but I want okay. to publicly apologize. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair and Council Members, my name is Dale Leininger. I live at uh, 2435 North 3rd Street, directly across from the library. I've lived there for 44 years. Wow. I've watched the traffic. My children have grown up there. They're now all adults and have grandchildren. But we've lived there long enough to know what the traffic is like on that street. And I'll keep my comments very brief. I've seen the material that uh, the uh, engineer has presented. I have to give him credit. When I called him, he responded within hours. He sent back, sent me information, which he was shown tonight on board, so I give the man credit for doing that. I thank you, Wayne, for that. Thank you. But it, you read that all, and what it says is, it's not must, it says should. So these statements having to do with counting right. how many accidents, et cetera, does not say you have to. Right. And my only point would be, in addition to the data, which makes sense, I think we need to really look at it practically and spend some time and see what happens. The library has a parking lot. People trend, tend not to park in the parking lot. They park on Third Street. I watch every day, the kids get out of the car, they run across the street. I see buses that come up from daycare centers to come to the library. They run across the street. I see many children using the library as a, I guess it, you tell your parents you're going to the library and that's wonderful, but they hang out there. They're not inside the library, they're outside the library. And they're going back and forth across the street. Without the stop signs, I can only, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in terms of the traffic. 
people already speed through through there and through our block. And I think if we take down that stop sign at M Road Street, it's going to be a straightaway, and it's going to be a disaster for all of us. So I'd ask you to please do what you need to to prevent those stop signs from coming down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lanica. Yes. Good evening, Council. My name is Sheila Dalford. I live at 2033 Bellevue Road. Before I begin my very brief statement, I'd like to point out that my colleague um, asked me um, if City Council would um, allow him to amend or um, his brief statement that he made earlier. And I said, I'm sure they would, but I'll obviously defer to you. So I just wanted to, I think he told me that to, to let you know that he's interested in doing so. Now getting to the point at hand. I have two very brief comments to make. The first is um, that data is indeed important. It's very important, but it is not dispositive. And I think that's very um, critical as you undertake this analysis and deliberation. Um, I think that Wayne has, um, has done his job, and I think that he is the representative for the city administration. And um, I think he is the person to whom we are directing many of the comments tonight. And this is not to defend or offend Wayne, but it is to say that he is, in fact, um, merely the representative, as you know, otherwise known as the messenger. Um, I, I want to say that um, um, earlier, when um, Mr. Woolley indicated that um, it is a bit unfair to uh, call out um, the uh, chief executive, that would be the mayor, I, I would beg to differ. I think that it is important that we have leadership in this city and that uh, leadership is required to be present and um, accounted for um, at critical junctures. And I would suggest to you that this is a pretty um, serious moment and that leadership is also support, um, they, supposed to support the people uh, who report up to the leader. And so I'd like to, to say to Wayne that you know, you've answered all the questions and I hope that you understand that um, I don't think that anyone intended to personalize them um, in relationship to you. Um, and certainly I know that council did not. That's number one. Um, number two, I'd just like to say that we can ask the question, where is the mayor? And I say that not because of this mayor, it could be any mayor. And this is about civic engagement. You have people here from the city who are engaged. That's very important, okay? If this were Mayor Bill de Blasio, it would be a lot worse, okay? Just think about that. So I think that overall people um, have asked the questions they thought were um, incredibly important. Now I'd like to make two other brief comments. I want to go back to the issue of anecdote as forming a basis for making decisions. So you have data, you have various data points, and I said at the outset, I don't believe, I think they're informative, but not necessarily dispositive. I think that is the case here. Um, I recall some years ago, um, there was a particular intersection in the city where we knew that an accident was going to happen and a child would in fact be struck by a car, and we talked to um, um, members of the city administration about that. Wayne, I think I might have mentioned that to you at some point. You were not here at the time. This was in a previous administration. The point is that we continue to talk about it and within a few weeks, because it was clear, you know how they say it's an accident waiting to happen. It happened. Um, you know, we have been told that the traffic study showed something different. It happened. That is experiential. That is equally in, or perhaps even more important than um, what the data might show. You might, you, I think in this instance, you, you need both, but you also have to listen to the experiences, and I think that's what's happening tonight, of the people who live in the community who are saying, this is what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. That is critically important. Finally, I would like to mention the issue of race and socioeconomic factors in relation to urban planning and government. Um, Mr. Woolley, with all due respect, you mentioned that um, you know, there have been comments made about race as um, a factor. 
I'm, I don't think that um, race was um, um, identified as a specific factor in the decision making, but I think we know where we live. Mm -hmm. We understand that race and socioeconomic status are always factors when it comes to urban planning. That is not to say that anything here, okay, has, um, had a, has directly been viewed through that prism, but it is to say that is always a factor in our city, and we must take that into account. If we don't, if we don't become socially conscious of what the various factors are, then we miss a critical, a critical component of our decision making. Mm -hmm. That I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you, and I understand that you have um, some serious decisions to make, and I would also point out that I once again want to keep open lines of communication between the city administration, city council, and the larger community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, since my name was mentioned three times, um, but the point that uh, I, I should not, uh, people should not cherry pick things that I say, and if they do cherry pick, they should say correctly. I did not say that people could not ask where the mayor was. I said that this meeting was set up while he was on vacation, and that's why he, he is not here. That's what I said. I also said that the, with, with regard to specific comments about uh, our city engineer and his ability, and, and whether or not he was uh, using the racial lens to make decisions with regard to this specific project, I said, in the two years that I've known him, he has not made such decisions using the racial prism. That's what I said. Now, we can have a larger macro discussion about post-reconstruction uh, uh, impact on urban areas, and we can, we can talk about that for, for, for years. But what I was talking about was specifically about Wayne and how he approaches his job. I also was uh, expressing that the mayor what made city council aware of his his vacation plans and it, he and scheduled a meeting that was important for the community but he could not attend because he was on vacation that's all i said okay madam chair may i just have a brief opportunity to respond brief. so that i can um, really capture how i want my comments to be characterized i would agree with mr woolley with respect to um with Mr. Martin, I, I was, um, um, that was my intention at the outset. Uh, perhaps it was overly wordy, um, forgive me, but that was certainly my intention. Um, so there is no disagreement there. Um, I want to say though that specifically with respect to leadership, I do believe in strong accountability and I do believe that everyone has the opportunity to criticize, critique, and comment on leadership. Um, that is what you sign up for when you become a leader. I don't think that um, I need to preach to the choir. You um, all know that. Um, and I think that everyone is, um, should be held accountable and that no one is exempt. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else? Please come up. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Joyce Vanderhorst Gamble. I reside at 2136 North 4th Street. I'm president of Camp Curb Neighborhood United. And um, my name of my ministry is Kingdom Warriors Outreach Ministry. First of all, I'd like to say that I am so, I am so happy that the community is stepping up and, and, and speaking out against the removal of the sign on, um, uh, the stop sign on 3rd and Emerald. First of all, I think it was, uh, it was terrible because the simple fact is the bubble that they put on McClay and further up on Kelker is now creating a disaster in itself because when the bus comes, the bus stops where the bubble is and the bubble is right here and the stop sign is here for the bus. So the bus, half the bus is in the intersection. Meanwhile, it's gonna create more problems. So therefore the bubble is a problem too as well. And I think you found that out because on, um, Third and McClay, you put a sign for the, I guess, for no turning, uh, I guess it's another signal, yeah, no, no right turn, right. because of the simple fact is you have trucks, you have people, you have right 
Rite Aid right there that gets a delivery. And it's like, it's, it's a chaos right there. You have to pray when you turn because now we got to turn to make sure we don't hit the car that's on the other side. So, and then the lady at the bus stop, she just came out the building and she says, this looks nice, but it's kind of awkward because now she has to find a way over around the bubble or on top of the, or go through the, the, pla- the flowers or whatever to get on the bus. So it's like, and then she says, well, where's the bus stop? I mean, it's, it's already created confusion, but now you're, you're adding more wood to the fire when you're trying to remove the stop sign. And third in Emerald is just where it's all the children from Italian Lakes, they emerge down there to the Chinese place, to the family dollar. They go up there to, to Front Street. They emerge there to go right on up to Emerald, to the park that we, the community, has redeveloped. And now that they want to go to the community and feel safe, but now you got to worry about crossing the street. So I vote to remove the stop sign and and please do a better research in regards to um, putting up signs, taking down signs and and the redevelopment of Harrisburg. Thank you. I think you meant to, I think you meant to keep it, yeah. To keep the stop sign there. Oh, okay. It's late, listen, listen guys, I get up five o'clock in the morning. It's eight o'clock, it's past my bedtime. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Yes. Good evening. My name is Melanie Cook. I live on North 3rd Street. I also live in the zone of North 3rd Street that doesn't appear to be part of Harrisburg because everything stops. Uh, Decorative lights, we don't get them. Uh, Consideration for bump outs and pedestrian safe crossings. Division would seem to be the most obvious place to start on 3rd considering the Zimbo Mosque, Italian Lake, the library, a whole host of every of, of things that make it necessary for pedestrians to cross safely. And anyone who has been up there realizes there's not even tape down. There's no paint down. It's not even clear how you're supposed to cross the street. So if you're going to start on 3rd Street trying to make a determination as to what should and should not be modified, one would think you would have started at Division and worked your way down. Instead, we have a traffic light at 3rd and Verbeck Street that would stop traffic on a highway, despite the fact that the only car traffic that's significant there is during a small window of time, presumably when the Broad Street Market and other entities in the immediate vicinity um, are experiencing business. But you're talking about removing stop signs on critical streets in this city that are immediately adjacent to daycare centers, to neighborhood centers, to playgrounds that are immediate pathways to other playgrounds, other shopping areas with absolutely no consideration. The assertion that letters were sent out, there's not one person in this room, despite people, responsible citizens, who have lived on that block for decades, not one person is reporting that they did, in fact, receive a letter. You talk about public meetings, a meeting that was purportedly held on November 11th of 2016 that was held at the Broad Street Market, presumably talked in detail about what would be done in the three or four blocks, if that, immediately adjacent to the Broad Street Market. There's also reference to an April 12, 2017 public meeting. Is that the public meeting that was held at the Y on 6th Street? There's no indication. Where was that meeting held? I see you shaking your head. Uh, the, the public meeting number one was at the Broad Street Market. Public meeting number two was at Strawberry Square. It was at Strawberry uh, Square. Square. Now, Strawberry Square, sure. where is the meeting that was held that would have incorporated the people that are currently experiencing the sign removal. Absolutely no meeting at all. And the meeting that was held at the Y that uh, Nevin referenced, that presumably was a meeting that related to the 6th Street, 7th Street quarter. And as he said, that meeting was scheduled on less than two hours notice. Immediate emails, which I can produce because I sent some to city council people saying, look, there's no notice of this meeting. We need an opportunity to talk about this. This needs to be rescheduled, which it never was. Also, today we've heard that this is supposed to be based on data, not public opinion. Well, that's curious because they've held two meetings most recently on July 18th of 2019 for the Second Street Quarter. Prior to that, there was one on November 7th of 2018. 
2016 to talk about the Second Street Quarter, where I was very vocal in my questioning as to whether or not and where the traffic that was going to be rerouted off of Second Street would go. And the engineer at that point acknowledged, you're correct, that that traffic would feed onto Third Street to the tune of 30% of it. And my question then at the second meeting and now is you're taking 30% of traffic off of Second Street, which is a wider street with less residential volume and putting it onto Third Street, which is more narrow. And that was before you did the bump out situation. And now you want to remove these stop signs. So basically from McClay, where trucks over 25 feet are no longer allowed to make a right. I don't know if any of you have observed that sign and who approved that sign. Now if you're coming off of McClay Street and you're driving a truck over 25 feet, you can't make a right and head down towards Verbeck, towards the market, towards other entities. You have to make that left and go up Third Street. So you're sending a volume of, of Tr vehicular traffic and truck traffic up a street where you are proposing to remove stop signs under the theory that studies that occur on a website somewhere crash modification clearinghouse that you can't confirm who puts the data up, how accurately the data is tracked to see if it's current and you're basing your determination as to whether or not these should or should not be stop signs on this. Additionally, the guidelines that you're referencing, they're not rules, they're not regulations, they're not statutes. They're recommendations made by PennDOT. These are things you should consider if you're deciding whether you should keep a stop sign or removing a stop sign. PennDOT is not telling you these stop signs have to be removed. And to hear you say that, you know, I'm making a decision based on my professional opinion. First of all, to say that you were there three days a week for the last two years, you are not sitting on that street and neither is any member of your staff because if they were, they wouldn't get anything else done from the time that traffic hits that street until the time that it ends. So the fact that somebody may have been on that street for 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour, two hours a day does not mean that that gives you a clear indication as to the traffic, the use, and whether or not those stop signs are or not effective. And the argument that anybody who runs a stop sign, if a stop sign is run, it should be removed, that is a completely ludicrous argument. Every stop sign in America, somebody is going through it at some point. So if we're basing removing a stop sign on whether or not you have or have not observed somebody run it, then take them all out. Because every stop sign has been run at some point in time. Also, it is interesting that Berg Magazine this month, August, has children sitting on the steps in front of the Capitol, merrily, happily, safely eating ice cream. But we have heard people talk about the children in the city of Harrisburg as if they're being irresponsible by riding their bikes or not being mature enough to know that they need to look both ways carefully to walk out on the street. Our children are our responsibility, and they have a right to be children. And we are going to protect their right to be children and not say that because I can pluck a study out of the air that says these stop signs should be removed without knowing whether it was a similarly populated community, what the circumstances were with respect to why those stop signs were, were going to be removed. We were not going to let you say, OK, they're going because we're the engineers. I'm a lawyer. I have worked in development field. I have worked in the regulatory field. I know engineering. No engineer in his right mind is going to say, based purely on data, we are going to make decisions across the board as to whether or not an action should or should not be taken. And to suggest that because you have one meeting at the Broad Street Market and one meeting at Strawberry Square, that therefore you have tapped the population of people who are going to be most impacted by what you're proposing to do is offensive. <sighs> Give me one second. I mean, you come with comments prepared, but it is like you're hopping all over the place based on what people have and have not said. But 
the most critical thing, I think, that was said relatively early in this meeting and should be the controlling factor, is nobody here is saying that we want to see or have an expectation that the stop signs are going to slow traffic. Out of your own mouth, stop signs are to control the traffic at the intersection. And that is what they have been used for historically in the United States. That's what they have been used for on Third Street and need to continue to be used for. Also, the comment, and I want to make sure, because the question was put, are the signs going to stay unless and until city council makes a determination on the public record as to whether or not they should be removed? And you started your sentence, but then you also slipped in, if you will not run them. So the question that I'm putting to you again are you saying that you, as the engineer for the city of Harrisburg, will take no action to remove those stop signs unless and until this city council votes and improves their removal? With no addendum to if somebody runs it, then I rescind what I just said. I, I hope to get guidance from city council on this matter. Right now, the stop signs are scheduled to be removed when the line painting is put in. I, I hope to get guidance can, from city council. And is there a, 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 an anticipated date or drop dead date when the line painting is going to be completed? Because the signs that say the, the, the stop signs are coming out on the 23rd are still up. They do not say, oh, wait a minute, our line painting was delayed, so they won't be removed on Friday. Right, right. There, um, I don't know what the drop dead date is. I think we're a week behind, so a week uh, 30th. So council would need to hold a special meeting to hold an election on or before the 30th to ensure that the stop signs are not coming out. Madam President, I wanted to speak on this issue, but I wanted to wait until everyone okay. had okay. a chance. Okay, I'm, I'm just putting it out there as a yes. question that is and on the table. You okay. can speak to it now or whatever, but thank you again. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Midland, you had an opportunity to speak. Would you please let Ms. Mr. Um, Norris speak, please? Go ahead. Uh, I believe earlier, Madam President, you stated that you wanted a solicitor's opinion on yes. this matter. Yes. There's been a lot of issues that have been brought up. Uh, one particular uh, issue is that everyone should know that under section 3, 109.2, uh, yeah, 109 uh, any amendments to the traffic control map has to be brought to council by way of ordinance. Right. And so, um, and the traffic control map actually deals with uh, the stop intersections that are legally authorized exactly. in the city. Therefore, for there to be any type of changes, that would have to be by way of ordinance. Well, thank you, sir. We, thank we, you. We, I'm sorry, you Wait, we no, were going to ask about that specifically Here. just right. to yep. see exactly where we need to go with this. Right. I, and, I, and I can assure you that we were not going to make any decisions on uh, the stop sign removal until we had a chance to confer with Mr. Grover. I spoke with him today, and I think he's due back next week. And we're going to meet in, uh, in his office and discuss that. And again, just in closing, because I was here at the City Council last meeting last week, and I deferred to President Williams. I made some comments, and one of the comments that I, that I did ask is, how does this happen? How do signs go up saying, to advising the citizens that these stop signs are coming down, and when we call our City Council people, they're unaware that those signs have even been posted? So. That is an issue that absolutely has to be addressed. Right. We are electing you people to, to lead this city. We are not electing you to have it be a surprise to virtually everybody that the signs are even up there. And I'll just leave that there. But to have heard someone earlier say that this third street plan was adopted clearly before the second street quarter plan was finalized. And so 30, the estimation that 30% of the traffic off of 3rd Street or off of 2nd Street is going to go on to 3rd. That has not been factored Take into this plan, but yet you have not modified the plan based on that information. Also, the fact that the 3rd Street plan was adopted, and when I say adopted, it's like, when did you present this to council? In what format that said, this is what we were going to do on 3rd Street? When did that take place? Okay. I have the dates up there behind you. 
of all the dates that council voted on various parts of the uh, project? Yes, the, the date to approve the award to the engineering firm. But where is the date that says council approved this? There's not a date. We did uh, not And that's it. my There's point. There's not a date. I'll, I'll answer for you. Yeah. There's not a date. And as a matter of fact, answer to your question that you indicated about council not knowing about the signs. No, we did not know about signs. I knew about the signs because I live in that area. Yeah. And immediately when it was put up, I contacted Mr. Martin and had a meeting with him. Okay. And again, so the representation that all this was done with public notice, with council approval, is based on what I've heard, incorrect. Because there was a plan that was put out there, there was a plan that was discussed at two meetings, one, neither, none of which, neither of which, occurred in a critical neighborhood where many of the steps are being taken, and it, no plan was ever fi finalized, brought in front of council, and presented to the public, which is how it's supposed to be done. And thank you. We did see the plan, I mean, the plan did come after the grant, like, because there was a whole, because when the plan came forward, like for us, the novelty were the bump outs, because we had never seen bump outs in the city. So we spent a lot of time on bump outs. Okay, and the plan that you, you reviewed said that these stop signs were coming out? We had. Yes or no? Like no. Yeah. Yes I or no? It's three years ago. Okay, exactly. Remember. No. I read it. Well. Yes. No. Thank I read you. It. Sometimes it's also, I mean, not it to said, create. Well, now let me just on the zero. Tension is when people on the ask zero the vision, question. All we're asking on for the is zero a simple vision. Answer. Let me just take, let me just state to you what was in the zero vision, because I did ask this question and, but last again, week. But again, zero vision. He said that the zero that, vision that, plan yeah, that post dated this right, plan. That's right. 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 So it right. wouldn't be. But I was going to read you covered what? this in zero vision. Okay. This would have been theoretically reviewed, approved prior to zero vision. So whatever zero vision says, it doesn't relate to the third street component. Which once you started doing the zero vision plan, why didn't you circle back and incorporate the third street component into that plan rather than leave it hanging out as its own separate little, because you have the third street plan, you have the seventh street corridor plan, you have the second street plan, you have comments that were put forward during the comprehensive plan, which were, were never adopted. And to answer the question about, you know, why don't we consider a, a multimodal trolley, that was recommended, because I recommended it for Third Street during the transportation component of the comprehensive plan. And we haven't seen any of that adopted anywhere. Okay. Thank Update you. all stop and yield signs, yield signs within the HIN, uh, remove or replace non-manual on uniform traffic control devices compliant signs along the HIN. Never did it say anything about stop signs. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Tracy Myers. I live at 432 Harris Street. I have very good friends all around this area. Madam President, council members, Everyone present, thank you for allowing us to speak. I never received a letter. I've okay. lived here since 2001 in April. I didn't know anything about this. Okay. I found out about this because Mr. Madsen came to my door on Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much. As far as the, the two things, the thing I do not understand is how you are basing your data on reported and non-reported accidents. How are you collecting unreported accident data? Um, so if the, police res re if the police respond to a call, but it doesn't meet the requirement to be reported, they indicate it's a non-reported. So the police may still show up. Maybe there was no uh, damage to a vehicle that would, uh, or, or injury. So it's considered a non-reported accident. That won't okay. go uh, show up with the PennDOT data, but we have access to it through the police department. Is there anywhere in your information set the three accidents that occurred at the corner of Harris and Third Street in October and November of last year when there was extensive vehicle damage? Because I'm not, I'm not feeling that. I'm not seeing where it, any of that happened. And I know the people, and I know the cars that were involved in being. So I guess if a police completed a police report, um, 
then I have it. If the, if it wasn't, if there was no, if the police didn't show up, I would not have that information. So if 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 the PennDOT road, uh, guidelines is five crashes, I'm telling you, I know of three in the last seven months. So I'm just asking you to check your information. Right. And your data. What I really wanted to say is, when you take down a traffic sign for traffic control, I'm reminded of the story of the little boy who was throwing the, the starfish back into the sea as the tide was going out and they were stranded on the beach. And the old man came to see him and said, what are you doing, kid? You, you, you can never, look at all these starfish, you can, never, you can never save all of them. It won't make any difference what you're doing. And the little boy with that picked up the starfish nearest to him and he threw it back into the sea and said to the old man, it made a difference to that one. I ask you to make a difference for that one, that one child that is going to be going across the street, not thinking what he's doing, and the car with no stop sign is going to cause damage that will cause a great deal of harm to that child, to the child's family, and to all of us who live here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Myers, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. No one else on that Wait, huh? side? Okay. No, we don't have to do rebuttals. Now, if you have a thing. I want to answer it up because you know he's saying that I talk to you about his engineer. We don't want to get into a, a verbatim back and forth. If you if you would like, would you after the meeting, would you please speak with him regarding that? Uh, no problem. Okay, thank you. And you may I make a clarification of my comment with this comment? Okay. Whose comment? Oh your uh, your own comment. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My, okay, my your comment. own comment. Okay. In case it was misunder misunderstood or misconstrued. Uh, when I was referring to the data between certain years, like after certain years and before certain years. Yes, there probably isn't, uh, well, there is data. That wasn't my point. Uh, my point is about the number of accidents that have occurred since the stop signs were put in place at Third and Calker for the four-way as opposed to what, how many accidents there were before that. Because I'm basing my belief from what, number one, what anecdotally what people have told me before I moved there, and also the other intersection where there were numerous accidents before it was a four-way stop, and I don't know of any since it's a four-way stop, which would not be reflected if it was in data, you know, just going back a few years. I, I, I could. I know. So Mr. Sorry. Zoda, I want to be fair to you. I, I allow Ms. Ford to go up to do a rebuttal, so please keep it. No, no, no. I mean, I just I want to be fair. I did allow her to come back up and re. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, all right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Allen. You want to say something? No, I just the the question. I think just to understand your point was that the stop signs by being placed there reduced the number of incidents that occurred prior to when they were in place. That was the point that you were trying to make, correct? Right. There were, I guess it was, uh, I think, what, third, with respect to Third Street? That's I think what happened say. before it was Nothing. a four-way stop Nothing. is Nothing. what they're proposing with this. Right, because I think, in, and I do recall this too, because I Next can't believe I've lived there for 20 years as well. No, um, do, but I think that was, I remember when they went in we stand and it was in response basis. to the activity that, that was going on. And so I think to your point that the general feeling was that the extenuating activity that recur like occurred to accidents was reduced because they were there. Right. Okay, that's, I just, and that's. Then, so when they're saying, well, there are not enough incidents and this would cause well, Perhaps because they did the job, to your point. Okay, that's. I just I, as you're talking, I just wanted to and have to, that clarity. And to be fair, we, we looked at the data before the stop sign was installed, and the dat crash data at that time, and this was back in the '90s, was not enough to warrant the stop sign. We then looked at the crash data in between to see if the types of crashes were indicative of a non-warranted stop sign, and indeed they were. They were. Uh, 
side struck passing vehicles, uh, telephone pole hit, um, and a rear end collision. That's just that Kelker. So th that's what we're basing on. We can't okay. undo what was done, and, and I, I understand his, his point. It, we, right. we can't, that, and that's why it's just yeah. asking for clarity. Yeah. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. We just can't, we can't anticipate what Understood. Understood. Oh, 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 the only way we can anticipate is using studies. Okay. And that's what we did. Okay, council members. Mr. Majors. Okay. Uh, lastly, and I think uh, this goes to the point that uh, the, the solicitor's office made and uh, Councilman Allen made. Uh, all of the stop signs are currently as a part of our traffic control map, right? Uh, no. S some of these never had ordinances associated with them. They were just put up. Okay. So, okay. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, Kelker and Boyd have ordinances. The other two do not. That's the records that I've been able to uh, find. So okay. Emerald, does, Emerald does not and Harris does not. Okay. But I think as, as we're trying to move forward through this process, ensuring that we follow the rules that are on the books would say that that these traffic control maps need to be made by ordinance, so it has to come before council. Right. When council sees these signs, like I said, we had no notice to the posting of uh, the, uh, I guess, orange signs that were located on Emerald and Kelker. Uh, so if we're going to make those changes, and even if, the, the, as you pointed out, the one, on, the one on Kelker did have one, correct? I believe Kel yes. I believe yeah. Kelker has right. an so, ordinance but, associated with it. So, for an order it. for it to be removed, it would have to come before, then come before council. So, all we're asking for is I made the comment last week before I had to leave, uh, and I'll make it again today. Is that communication between the administration and council? So, except so we can have these conversations. These these conversations are necessary in our community if we're going to make changes. Uh, like I said it's it's the, the rules that are on the book. So, because you know. Previous administrations not blaming anyone that's sitting in this room today because those decisions were predated. I believe they predated everyone that's in, in a position now. So if we're going to make these changes, let's make them according to the book so that you know that we can be clear and we can have these discussions. And if things need to stay in place, they stay in place. But it, everything should be done in, in in the in the spirit of of openness and transparency to to the public. So with that being said, I know we're, we got to figure out what. The next steps are. I know we have a meeting on the 27th scheduled. No, we don't have a meeting on the 27th. Uh, oh. What I'm going to do is probably call a special meeting. I do have to meet with. Uh, oh. No. oh, no, because no, no. we've had all these no, other no. meetings. We yeah. had all the other meetings, so okay. the next meeting was supposed to be scheduled for September the 17th, but I will have a special mm -hmm. meeting and have to confirm with Mr. Grover as to uh, adopt an ordinance to address the amendments on the stop sign coverage. And you were talking about the. Um, Emerald Street, it was just the inner office memorandum. It was an executive order. Uh, there may have been an executive order. I have a inner office. It was office. an executive oh, order. okay. There was not. No, okay. It was an executive. Um, it was uh, an inner office memorandum. I will, I will say that the ordinance that was referenced about traffic control devices also includes all the bump outs, okay. also includes amendments to the lines striping, also includes amendments to parking. Okay. So. Um, so we will, we will move. It would have to be a comprehensive right. Third Street corridor uh, ordinance or, 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 or ordinance. proposal. Right. Yeah. And, we, and we'll look at that. That's we think we need the legal We'll look at that right. ordinance as it, re it relates to the, the Third Street uh, corridor. And as uh, indicated, we will at that time decide what we, what, what we need to do as far as the stop signs. Well, not just the stop signs, the entire, the entire okay. corridor. Okay. Yeah, the right. mapping. Okay. So if it's one stop sign, you know, maybe Boyd Alley comes out and the yields go in, then that would be okay. an amendment to our, our pavement marking signing plan, um, which we can then update and have as an attachment to the ordinance to comply with the um, right. Because we've traffic done, control we, we, ordinance. Yeah, we, we, we do it. We yeah. do it. We've made. We've I just made went through changes. my my emails for the past four years, and we've had ordinances to make changes to the traffic control maps. Exactly. And, and, exactly. and might I suggest on projects throughout the year? Might I suggest that we these traffic control maps are such a integral part of everything I do that we have like quarterly meetings on traffic because oftentimes I'm faced with a situation I have now where I have to delay a contractor 
probably figure out a way to pay for the damages for delaying the contractor. I have to figure out, I have to get the engineer s sitting next to us to agree to modify the plans when we're out of budget on, on, you know, on, the, on that project in design fees. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So if we could, um, you know, I've heard all, all, I've been here with you and I hear the issues and I, I understand if we could do like quarterly traffic control uh, meetings yeah. for well, all these issues yeah, that some of the initiatives that you want to undertake, you need to come before council before you do that. Yeah. But they get because the they impact get of what you do what, on Third Street. You're talking about thirty percent right, right increase. Now, what right, about Sixth Street? Right now we Sixth have Street is a is a racetrack. Right now at the solicitor's office, we have an ordinance to change Harris Street between six and seven to two way. We have vacations of streets. Harry multiple Street? well for the uh, state archives for state archives building we have various petitions to change directions of one-way streets mm -hmm. are you have gonna enlarge multiple. harris street because harris street's a narrow street so, it's only about so, this small. No, he's, he's talking all, about uh, the small portion the six and seven you're six, talking about from going six, from six to six seven, to seven right. street well, but um, it's, you're, you're my, also talking about a narrow street are you going to have no on-street parking then mm -hmm. I believe, I mean, believe the off-street parking would no, be eliminated. No this, again, this is done by the, this is archives. by the state archives and and the. But that hasn't come for council either. That's my point. Is there's so many projects that have so, these. Uh, if I can, I, I, so a lot of the struggle that we're we're, we're talking about, and and especially coming from uh, uh, Wayne's department, is a function of. Um, uh, I, I think we've had this discussion about meeting as a committee of a whole all the time and whether or not we should break that up in, in, with some committees. Listen, I, sure. Well, I chair the Public Works Committee, which right. deals with the traffic. Yes. If Wayne wants to bring the idea of having quarterly meetings, we can gladly do it. As We meet as a committee of the whole, but we can also decide to meet and have a meeting dedicated to public works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, this is the first I'm hearing from Wayne about this. I, I, I'm, I serve as that now. I, I would hope that whoever serves in that capacity moving forward would be more than willing to accommodate anything that happens, but we also have to get it from the solicitor's office and it has to be brought down to council so then it can be uh, have, held at a public meeting. Agreed. And, and I think we, have to, we just have, we have some roadblocks we have to address along the way. We can have the discussion about that, but they're, they're, it, it'll clear up a lot of what his worries are, allay his, some of his fears of, of, of projects that are currently, and allay some of your fears about being informed about, uh, you know, some of the traffic changes that are that are pending. I think that every area of this this city administration, we have seven people on this council, and they each chair a committee. I think it's in the best interest, as far as transparency, to make sure that you contact these these committee chairs, and any area of which you feel that we need to be informed about. You should do it beforehand. Uh, and so I, I'm speaking to you personally because you're the business administrator, so you can relate this to Mayor Pappenfuss if I don't see him before you do. I, 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 I think that we've had these conversations. I will, t I will, I will initiate that. Right. And I think we've had some conversations with, with committee chairs. Uh, and uh, I think we look forward to the ability to, to, to do that because I think it will speed well, up our I just, ability. Well, let me re reiterate it again because you did not do that because in this case, Mr. W Mr. Majors would have known what's going on through his committee with, with Mr. Martin, and he didn't. I, I honestly thought it would be with the safety committee. I, I honestly thought okay. that was the purview spot for traffic safety. Uh, it's in public but, safety. I well, mean, uh, but I think this goes back works. to some of the larger things we, I know we've talked we've about a lot. Even yeah. in public it's, safety. Even, no, even, even if it was, you never well, informed. Well, no, no, no. I, I don't. Um, I, I don't. I was told that it goes through the solicitor's office for ordinances. See, that, right. So that's, okay. And that's, so we need, we need, okay, then we probably need clarification through that. Yes. Well, that's, the, that's, I mean, if we're thinking about communication back and forth, I mean, when I'm going to let you off the hook on this. Like, it's not your responsibility to communicate directly to council on a regular no, basis. It it's, it's, it's coming from your office. And I think that's. I say the office of administration. So I'm like, no, you can. No, no, we've had these discussions, right? And, and I think that's and, part of. We've absolutely had these position. discussions. We've also had discussions about formal, whether or not we should formalize the, the committee process a, 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 apart from uh, council as a whole. Uh, so those are things that we we should stem discuss whether or not we should mm -hmm. we should break them out. Okay. All right. Is anyone else who would like to speak before we adjourn this evening? I would. Okay. 
So I just, just to recap, some common themes that I heard from the residents were communication, education, and outreach. And I just hope that that would be received by Mr. Martin and the administration as a whole. Um, I just wanted to thank the residents for coming out this evening and making your voices heard. I think there's strength in numbers and you certainly um, or full force this evening. We also received many uh, emails via written communication, so I wanted to acknowledge those as well. They were all in opposition of this effort. So thank you again for your participation. Okay, anyone else? Oh, are you, you, you going to announce when the special meeting is going to be? No, or? I need to talk to Mr. Grover first and then set up the meeting, and you certainly will okay. make and sure that it is pub it's publicized. Yeah, yeah publicized. Uh -huh. Anything else? Okay, anyone else before we concur? Again, I concur with Ms. Bowers. Thanks everyone for coming out this evening and certainly your uh, opinions, your issues regarding the stop signs, we will take into consideration. I will meet with uh, Mr. Grover on Monday and try to decide how we need, we need to address this ordinance. Uh, we will meet with you, Wayne, as well, you know, because of course we have to come through you because you talked about all the other Pacifics involved in this. If there's no other conversation, I ask for an adjournment, please. So moved. Second, please. Second. Meeting's officially adjourned. <laughs>